stress. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks is working, but I'm freeze on the main one. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> so we we are going to start. Um, it's already on YouTube and Facebook and in audio on our platform. So we're going to start. I, I will introduce um, the uh, the all. Um, Afternoon. Thank you for everyone to joining. I see Cassia and Andrea here and Jenny. So um, we sort of we're going to start with an introduction to Audio Blast. Then, which is the ten years of the festival, and then we're going to go along um, the afternoon with Radical Radio and the Goo Wolfgang Spoon Andre at around three fifteen. Uh, Eliat, uh, and then uh, Kakosua and Chagat, Sylvain Soulquier, Radio Nose Collective, Seals, and Katrin Libervoskaya to finalize this conference. And then uh, tomorrow, from tomorrow, we will have the first concerts and uh, until uh, Sunday uh, midnight. Every night, we'll have different uh, concerts from all, the, all over the world. Um, there you go. So I'll start uh, to talk about Audio Blast. So we we came across this idea in in ten years ago about to develop uh, streaming live concerts on the internet with the idea of transmission and multiple transmission. And um, so every year we more or less do a call 
uh, it depends. Sometimes it's curated by different artists or curators, and sometimes it's uh, um, sort of like um, work with a call in an open call. It's always around some ideas with the, the transmission and the radio, the live streaming, uh, in the in the framework of um, transmission art, uh, which is the art of transmission in every kind of way. So it could be using analog radio, or it could be using streaming, or it could be using other types of uh, transmission, such as uh, electromagnetic or uh, or the, any type of uh, transmission. Um, so as we've seen, for example, in uh, this year uh, exhibitions, we have um, people talking about the telephone as a transmitter uh, of information uh, through uh, text messages, for example. Um, and um, so we have, um, we have a catalog that come out uh, for the festival with uh, lots of interviews on the APO 33 website. They give a, a sort of a, a larger view of how the artists are thinking about these questions and how they work the uh, radio, um, the radio uh, and the transmission in their own work. Because through the open call, it's not the idea is not necessarily to have the theme as a sort of like strict constraint, but may maybe more like uh, a directions and each artist are uh, developing their own approach to um, to, the, to this relation. So this year is transmission, retransmission, um, and the variant waves. So it's it's a bit of a strange time with this theme because the uh, the Russians are walking on Ukraine and starting a war. We don't know where it's going to go, uh, but. I was uh, one of the main reference we've been uh, working on is actually Russian, and uh, his name is uh, Vladimir Klebnikov, and um, the quote we took for the theme, uh, which is the radio of, of the future, is from 1921, and uh, coincidentally, strangely, weirdly. Um, it corresponds to another period 100, year, 100 years ago that have a similarity to what we're living now. So in 1914, 1918 was the First World War, uh, so roughly 100 years ago, but around the same period. And 1918 and to 1920 was the Spanish flu pandemic. So it's, it is a bit odd this 10 years festival and the relations to the context and uh, so we we're still going to talk about Vladimir Klebinko because it's it's actually interesting toward this festival and and the context because he's talking about the tools uh of uh of that time the radio as um in the same times as something um something that will be I would say um It's a new tool with new possibilities, right? And in the same time, it's it's an obsession for uh, for Klebnikov. It's like there's a, there's a form of relations to war. Uh, it's contextual too from from a hundred years ago, where the, the futurist was in the same times obsessed, admirative of the technology and uh, also the context of the war. So in the case of Vladimir Klebnikov, uh, even if it's like very interesting in terms of uh, how he sees the radio and how we see the radios today, especially with the internet, uh, and the fact that uh, we'll talk about it later, the Russian are using also cyber war and the internet for their war. And at that time, the radio was also used for war. So Vladimir Klebnikov is also um, fascinating by um, the warrior, the idea of the warrior, and the radio is a bit like one of the weapon of the warrior, and um, 
is interesting in the war, not in the sense of from the perspective of the politicians of the or, or the warriors or the army. It's interesting in the perspective and sort of like romantic idea of the warrior, especially it's hundred years ago. So you could imagine how they they seen this idea uh, from the Tsar and and the army of the Tsar and this whole relation to um, the hero. Here is we're in a different war. There's no such hero, and then we we hundred years after, so the the relation is different, and it's. So anyway, this is the context and Delimir Klebnikov uh, enlightened some of these questions. And so I'm going to talk about this theme really quickly and also quote him and uh, Paul Schmidt, who work on uh, Klebnikov. So basically, Delimir uh, is saying the radio of the future, this quote you've, you've read, most, most of you, is the central tree of our consciousness that will inaugurate new ways to cope with our endless undertakings and will unite all mankind. Now, this is beautiful, but <laughs> I don't know if we manage to uh, unite all mankind or in the connectivity, in a way we are doing now, where we all connected and Audio Blast represents some of this relationship with the different people in a different part of the world. And there is, there's been all there for the last two years or so and a reinforcement of this idea of streaming. But this is what he's saying. The main radio station, that stronghold of steel, where clouds of wire cluster like strands of hair, will surely be protected by a sign with a skull and crossbones and the familiar word danger. Since the least disruption of radio operations would produce a mental blackout over the entire country, a temporary loss of consciousness. So there's a uniting the mankind and there's a sort of like loss of consciousness. So radio is becoming the, the spiritual son of the country, a great withers and as a sorcerer. Um, let's try to imagine this radio main station. So it's continuing. In the air, a spider's webs of line, a storm cloud of lining bolts, some subsisting subsiding, some flaring up a new crisscrossing the building from one hand to another. A bright blue ball of spherical lightning hanging in the midair like a timid bird, guy wires stretched out of a slant. From this point on planet Earth, every day, like the flight of a bird in springtime, a flock of new departs news from the life of the spirits. Uh, you can see here, uh, he's talking about the cloud, the spider webs, and all this. He's using this image. They already like pre-thought this. This what's happening now, uh, in some ways, and that's why it's, this this is crazy. So in this stream of lighting, bird, the spirits will prevail over force, good counsel over threats, which is be sounds beautiful, but it's not happening. <laughs> we have the threats, and we have. Uh, the force over the spirits. Anyway, the activities of artists will work with the pen and brush, which is not our case. We're going to see that again. This discovery of artists will work with ideas like Menikov or Einstein. We instantly transport mankind to an unknown shores. Or what we're trying to also push in Audio Blast is this idea that radio art or transmission art and the radio in general is the tools Advice on day-to-day -day matters will alternate with lectures by those who dwell upon the snowy hates of the human spirits. Anyway, uh, what's interesting is the response, and uh, many years after, of Paul Schmidt that has been working on quite a lot, uh, the, the, the writing of uh, uh, Klibnikov, and uh, especially in relation to the uh, Russian avant-garde uh, and the futurist uh, avant-garde, which is concerned here. And Schmidt has been saying the universal communicative power of the medium resonate with the ambitious social project, an artistic vision that sprouted across the globe in the wake of the First World War, which I was introducing you to. Significantly, Klemnikov's vision encompasses both the educational and aesthetic domain Radio is imagined as a medium, both for the universal edification of mankind and for its musical de de delectation. So this is where we intervene in the festival, uh, with those both ideas in similar ways. 
parallels to comparable celebration of the internet in the later 20th century are easy to come by, of course, suggesting that Klebnikov's evocation of the radio of the future is an early manifestation of one of the dominant techno-utopian ideas fixes of our time. So this is why the context of this festival is very strange, is that we have this uh, relation to the vision of Klebnikov and what's happening today and a recurrency of, uh, of the context. So we, we since uh, two or three years, we've been working uh, on a few aspects. We opened the exhibition for calls and uh, we had this year a few artists that will be uh, talking today, not all of them. Uh, but we, um, in the exhibition part, we had uh, Rodrigo Romero Flores, Alex Desoblio, and Mary Musero, Sylvain Soucle, Wolf Gansborn, that will join us later, Ella Viatre, and Sheridan Frame. So, all those artists, they, in, this, in their way, uh, work on this issue. Uh, some of them will talk about it, some of uh, the others will have their interviews, add their interviews in the catalogue. And also, for a few years, we've been working with this group called Archi Sony, which is a mix of sonic and architecture, to think about uh, devices uh, that will be used during the exhibition, and where the artists will uh, propose uh, some bits that will uh, interconnect with that. This year was a bit different. Every artist had their own ideas and visions of uh, what they want to develop through the themes towards their work. Uh, but um, um, this group uh, has been working on this idea of transmission art and the tools that we're using and how to interact with this tool, how the public is interacting with those tools. So um, it creates a sort of architecture that is a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, and through the construction of this, uh, this sort of memorial architecture, uh, this is sort of parcel vision of architectural structure. The group rebuilt and reconstruct the city through the listening of shortwave radios, uh, transmission of uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, field that will transmit and receive sound for different sound artists uh, using this medium. So this relation to radio is, as I said, related to 100 years of history with Vladimir Klebnikov. Uh, that thought in 1921, I was we seen before, um, he considered radio as an radio art, as an art form in itself. So this is also a change in relation to futurisms with the noise as music uh, and creating like uh, um, orchestras of noise. And here we have like uh, the Russians um, futurist part, I imagine the radio, the research and art and radio as a, a proposition in itself, a medium in itself. Um, and so the variation of the waves that compose the radio transmission is a phys in a physical way, if you like, that like the, the analogical radio is a variation of electrical waves on a certain frequency. So you could, you could have different frequencies on the radio uh, with different uh, short wave, long wave, FM, AM, uh, and so on. Uh, there's a whole realm uh, of transmission that we could approach from ham radios to commercial radios, and the whole spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, goes uh, really fine in different um, frequencies. Uh, we use Wi Fi as radios, Bluetooth as radios, all of those uh, are using the same relations to frequencies and variation of these frequencies. So in our ID, this variant waves is in the same times an allegory of our time and as a sort of a, a relation to how the, the different waves of viruses interact, especially now in the last two years with the COVID, um, but also the variation of time. So how the time is perceived in this way, for example, 100 years ago, and the relations to repeat in history. Uh, and so, so all these variants 
uh, it's been interrogating us, it's been changing us. And then there is this, this relation to transmission and retransmission uh, of both wave and bacteria. So the transmission is, in the same times, the transmission of radios, radio transmission, and it is also in here bacteria and uh, transmission and retransmission, what we've been seeing for the last two years uh, and 100 years ago with the, the Spanish. So the future of radio is also permanently played out on the networks. So since 20 years now, we've been working with streaming in APU 33. We, we are going to present um, a couple of projects after uh, that we've been doing to quickly give an example. Uh, and so this, this future of radio has been evolving since, since 100 years. And the tra retransmission of other transmission and the multiplication of the same transmission and the setting in the abysses, in the ether, in the multiplications, in the mirroring, is, is part of our everyday life. I'm actually doing that here in the studio. You can't see because uh, I put a background. But I'm actually retransmitting of a transmission of a, another transmission of the transmission I'm doing. And I'm going to do that all weekend. I'm going to transmit uh, what you're transmitting me and retransmitting you. And some of you might use the retransmission in that transmission. Uh, this is what is sort of like uh, changing the perspective of radio is that it's not only like one transmitter and one re and multiple receiver, it's like multiple transmission. So how does it one view transmission? How do we do this transmission? Today it's more obvious uh, with the digital tools and people have been using that for uh, the last uh, two years or more, very intensively. and. Um, but that how does one approach the art of the transmission? How do you think the, uh, the trans transmission art as your medium? So some, most of the artists that will be presented this weekend have thought about this and proposed, proposed uh, their work and their research or project that have a relation to this idea. And, um, and also, what is, what is the, this angle of the virus, the transmission, the bacteria? And the perversion of signal. Some, uh, some uh, of the artists also work on this idea of uh, the perversion of the signal, and also this transmission retransmission. Um, there's been some artists that work with the, the transmission that are available and then play with them. So how does one let the radio dirt live as a content itself? So that's also an extended thinking about the noise, the interferences, the noise signal ratio, the feedback, the antenna birds. There's quite a lot of um, proposition in the festival this year that work on these uh, ideas of the temperature, it's noise, et cetera, of the, of the dirt of the transmission radio. So we will look at that all afternoon with different aspects. And um, if you have any questions, there will be a few chat. There's a chat, IRC chat on the website. And then uh, there is... Um, the YouTube chat, and then there is also the Facebook chat. So there's different places where uh, everyone could uh, comment or uh, exchange and have the possibility to discuss with the artist. So I um, I let you know that you could uh, interfere in this discussion um, and propose. And if you have any questions during the afternoon, please go ahead. <clears throat> So, before uh, the next speakers, which is Wolfgang, Wolfgang Spahn, which is with us, um, and we'll uh, intervene in, uh, in sort of 10 minutes, um, 15 minutes, if he's still with us. Uh, I would like to present a couple of projects uh, that we've been working on uh, to give you an example of how we've been re researching these questions. So one of them is called Radical Radio, and uh, we will present a work called 14 megahertz. So in this project, Radical Radio, um, the idea is to record long sessions of stereo, uh, short wave, long wave, 
uh, reception. The, uh, the last um, research I've been doing uh, with Jenny uh, Piquet also uh, was around uh, the idea of a searching area that are sort of ghosted, uh, hunted, and performed there. And then uh, one of the projects I've also been doing uh, with that is, and I'm going to try to show you some photos, is I went to Scotland uh, for a festival. And uh, I'm going to try to... Uh, share my screen yes to show you some photos there you go so yeah i think you could all see that well this is a a representation of the waves and um so i've been hanging around with this receiver uh and in a sort of a derive way uh, to uh, to catch different different transmission. So I've been uh, using this receiver and record the sound that will be also display uh, on Friday and Sunday, and I also recorded main relay stations that. Are allowed to catch different type of signal but mainly and this is why i also present that and because it was really strange i went um, as a derive um, i found myself in a military base well i did recording uh, and um and I was very interesting because I was not allowed there, and um, there were military that were uh, all around marching, and then it was sort of risky in a way. And the context of the radio then they were making sense is how to suddenly like think about the radio as a, a transmission, uh, a sort of like weaponry transmission, as we have Klebinkov has been talking about. Anyway, <clears throat> this project will also present be presented uh, in the performance. So we will have like sounds from uh, the recording of the different places, and we will have like sounds from the studios. So, in the idea of uh, radical radio, there's also a parameter of this 14 megahertz is been used uh, notably by also the EVP, which is the electronic voice phenomena. So we, we oscillate between this, for, this sort of like secrecy uh, radio transmission and uh, these, the relation to ghosts in, uh, in, in the listening of the uh, outer world that has been using strangely 100 years ago uh, been appearing a hundred years ago, so this this project Radical Radio is a is a, it's a sort of a new series of recordings that we made in different contexts with a shortwave radio. So we record sound from EVP frequencies, this especially fourteen megahertz, uh, and electronic voice phenomena is attempting to record voice from the dead. So we're not only looking for dead voices. We don't, I, we don't like there's actually books and research about these issues, and people are doing a really important, like advanced work sometimes, a PhD and research, and so on. I'm not going to go into this because that's not the main idea. Uh, but it's for us a path to search for a radio phenomena in general, and that's why I'm in this recording in Scotland. There were a lot of Morse code, of course. There were a lot of different encrypted signal uh, that you could find on the long wave and the short wave in general. Um, and uh, I could occur in this range of radio. So, so mainly we're using radio receivers that everyone could find. It's uh, with a different type of bands. We don't arrive with like special technical 
receivers that you could find on market or scanners. It needs to be like something that is in the spectrum of shortwave radios that everyone could do. And then we run those radios in different contexts, the symmetry, the mountain, or radio relay, as I said. And then from there, we, uh, we record for hours, and if possible, all night. Nights is a very, we've, we've been seeing nights as being very interesting in terms of a, uh, different relations because with the dark and the humidity, it changed the way the transmission uh, is sort of traveling the world. So you will catch different type of uh, phenomena. So <laughs> this frequency, the 14 megahertz, is a 20 meter uh, long wave radio, amateur radio, ham radio. Then there is a portion of the shortwave radio spectrum that comprise between frequencies stretching from 14 megahertz to 14.350 megahertz that's very technical and the world of a ham radio is very technical and this is also very interesting to put because ham radio if you want to be a ham radio transmitter you need to have a license and this is this is a, a, a way this this domain has been operated like that for decades because you need a license because you could be controlled by the army this is again a question of the context and as we could see, uh, in this context, for example, a war that could come, a war that had been happening, the high radio and those frequency would be like um, secured by the army and the military in case of, uh, for example, uh, uh, bombing or uh, suddenly no access to internet because it would be the only transmission that will um, uh, be able to cross the world without any interference from, uh, for example, servers or internet relay or uh, pipes, physical pipes that are transporting the internet. And we go through like rebounding uh, into the uh, stratosphere. So the 20 meter band is widely considered among the best for long distance communication. Uh, and we are not always strict about this range in this project. Uh, it depends if there are any interesting sound phenomena at the time of the reception, which is not always the case, it depends where you are and the time you are. And in this context, we're running the receivers. So it happened that we switch to other short waves frequency are more interesting. In any case, and I will finish uh, the last five, 10 minutes about this, probably five minutes and leave the space to Wolfgang uh, to talk about his project. Um, and that brings us to another project that we start in 2002, uh, way before Audio Blast, uh, because uh, before Audio Blast, there were some other festivals online. There were one mainly, uh, and another occurrence placard, and uh, another music festival like this. But they all stopped, and we thought about continuing Audio Blast. But in 2002, we we developed um, a computer, a great computer orchestra. And this is why I'm taking this example, uh, is because it makes sense towards the context, again, of transmission. And especially the cyber war aspect of what's going on now uh, with Russia, uh, which is using that since um, a, couple, uh, a couple of decades, uh, but very intensively the last 10 years. Uh, so this orchestra uh, in 2002, the idea was to uh, from our AP33 Artist Collective, use digital device and collective musical sound production through the internet. So that makes it, well, it's important in the integration of IT resources within the orchestra. And I will explain why the IT resource and the networks were important. They, they were like stepping up the orchestra in terms of cooperation system and several elements in the common sound together. So each artist by participating in this project used computers in a very special way in the personal activity, in the projects, and they all built together collaboration between those different approaches. But one of the main things they have in common is that as soon as the group is creating the orchestra in a performance way, uh, it does, it's not necessarily online at that time, especially. Uh, it will be on Sunday. Um, we create it servers so we run our own servers and local networks so straight away we were sharing 
uh, web-based computer the local in the local networks. And so um, this is a very important because we, we end up participating to a uh, huge um, computer gaming. Uh, we, we participate like to, to, to more extensive like ex computer networks project in that time in the early days. So it was really like with the old screen and, uh, and, and, and some kind of old PC and, and Mac. And so, so the artist then intervened in as not as a specially bad practitioner of experimental sound work and then the way they were using the sound of each other uh, with their own program. And it seems incurringly uh, crossing like conflicting data and music scene at that time. So like the relations to the data and then making music was not like uh, clear at the beginning. And we make it more clear over the years. So we, we changed the proposition over the years and since to, to, to 2002. And from the lo local networks, uh, we went to the streaming uh, and to create a new form of orchestra uh, that changed the relations to uh, work together. And then it could be like people compose for that, or it could be like, um, we can make our own collective score or collective creations based on this idea of uh, transmitting and receiving uh, and um, uh, networks. So the orchestra will become really quickly a complex device where musicians interact with each other via chat system. So all uh, weekend we will also interact via chat system. And then there, uh, sometimes they're giving directions. Uh, so in, uh, in this case, the relations to the local internet networks, the external streaming transmission and, and this interaction was like purely digital. And the radio as a low tech, it was not directly the main concern of the orchestra, but the internet streaming is, a, is from the early days in, in 2002, where people used to send us through our server and shell on local networks. More in 2005 and six, where people start to uh, realize that they had some uh, possibilities of creation with those tools. So we start to use then live streaming to send our performances outside to the world, world web and sometimes receive other musician live stream, which what we're going to do on Sunday is, uh, is exactly that. So, so over the years also the musician have been differently, I've been involved in different ways. So we used to invite people who were part of our early days, laptop prediction or sound artists. But today, it really depends on the, um, the way uh, we interact with the musician online. So it's, it's more, um, I come back physically, it's more uh, the way we're going to work with the community. And then also, we were, we were, we are also able to write patches, uh, pure data, for example, that people will use together in the moving compositions that will be like semi improvised and composed uh, together. Anyway, I'm um, going to invite here, if there is no questions, I'm going to invite Volgum, Wolfgang to join me. Uh, if, yeah. yeah, hello. So, hello. Hey, microphones and everything is working. Yeah, perfect. Hello, Julian. How Thanks for having me here. I'm fine. Thank you, Julien and Jenny, for inviting me for this fantastic festival. And yeah, I have a lot to cover because I want to talk about my analog computer. So first try to share my presentation. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Art and arithmetic with electrons. That was my title. And it's about uh, a project I'm working. Yeah, actually, the last I started 20 years ago, an analog computer. 
And yeah, I have to cover a lot because yeah, it's a really outdated technology. So I thought maybe I give a brief introduction to actually what an analog computer is, and then I will explain um, how I build it and um, what one can do with it. Okay, maybe a short introduction for those who don't know me. I'm an artist. I work with light and sound. Um, but also I'm a developer for hardware and software. Um, yeah, I open source everything, not everything, but most tools I develop. Yeah, we, we have to see, or I always had the idea. I, I took a lot of um, stuff other people develop. So I think it's at least fair to share my development with other people. Everything is under a CCC license, um, non-commercial uh, contribution, please. I'm also a teacher at the Sound Studies and Sonic Arts at the University of the Arts. Okay, so my presentation will be, um, yeah, first a brief about my artistic motivation, why I am dealing with such themes. And then I go into analog computer. A little bit of history and what I did. And then I will uh, present um, three applications I'm working with. And that maybe also explains why I'm doing such things. And maybe it gives you an idea why maybe you could start to work with analog computers too. So first, my motivation is all in my art, I'm seeking for patterns um, in nature, in system, in machines audible and visual, so, but like Nam Shun Paik said, went to perfect, lieber Gott böse. So I am looking for patterns that are a bit more natural, that are not too artificial. So um, analog techno technology is perfect for this then. Um, that brings me to a, a, an example, is a, was a, Residence in Patagonian, where I Patagonia, where I examined in the macro scale mosses and lichen of this region, but also uh, from a bird eye perspective and compared these pattern and sonificate them, and yeah, made a video installation and built some now real existing token out of that. Okay, good. So come to the analog computer. Analog computer is an, yeah, so first, don't, don't misunderstood analog computer as a contradiction of digital computer. No, it's really something that is much older. So the first uh, analog computer, at least what we know is more than 2000 years old. It's a mechanism anti-terror anti -terror mechanism, an old Greek device, super complex device, device that mechanically um, displays movement of our planets in the solar system. And that is an analog computer in the sense of analogy. Anal in analogy to our solar system, this machine behaves similar. That means if you are turn something and, and change to a certain date, you see where the moon is, where which planet is where, and so on. With that, you can predict uh, eclipse or every um, whatever. You. And this is basic idea of an analog computer. It's analogy. It has nothing to do with digital. Digital is our calculation machines. Analog computers um, are simulation machines to simulate the, our solar system. But it, nevertheless, it, it was a powerful technology um, yeah, over the centuries. Um, people tried to build them mechanically, certainly at the beginning. They're one of the last big famous um, differential analyzer. Uh, whenever Bush, Bush built for the MIT, um, yeah, it was a mechanical analog computer and it can solve differential equation and so on and so on. 
and yeah, other examples are certainly everyone uh, knows the analytic engine from Babbage and so on and so on, 100 years before. But then at, um, at the beginning of the uh, 20th century, um, electric tubes were um, invented, so actually amplifiers, and with that, uh, it was possible to build analog computer uh, with um, electric analog computer. And here, I also don't mix it up with, at the time, you can, um, people started to build digital electric computers as well. Analog computers are simulation machines. So you build an electric circuit that simulates, simulates a certain behavior. As an example, maybe if you throw a stone in the water, the water makes waves. And an analog computer would be an electronic circuit that behaves, let's say, like the water. And yeah, maybe the force is then an electric power and the output is the waves. You can display these waves with a plotter or an oscilloscope. And yeah, and then by by changing, let's say, the, the size of the stone, so the electric input, maybe you can predict how these waves will change. Um, this is a photo of a, yeah, an early analog computer that was built to uh, operate a flight sim simulator. And you see, there were huge machines. And basically, um, for every operation, yeah, one had to build a really complex circuit. For, for example, this is a, a multiplier module of a Telefunken, a German Telefunken analog computer. And yeah, right, you see, uh, that's why this machine was a huge. Um, but um, nevertheless, the whole technology was still in use and was, for example, this is a schematic for uh, propellant measuring device in the lunar model for the moon landing. And by the way, the whole uh, flight to the moon was calculated by an analog computer. Or simulated, if you want to call it like this. Certainly on the, the mission itself, there was the first digital computer on board. But yeah, so this was the transition period. And yeah, until the 60s, um, one use these analog computers with, uh, like here. So what one has to do to, to, to calculate something, one has to patch the circuit. Um, is that actually means really to build an electric cir circuit for every problem you want to solve. For that, uh, one has these patch fields where you, yeah, yeah, you see them also, these patch fields, where you program your computer and these patch fields you could store somewhere, so there was a possibility to store the program. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, when I uh, started to work with analog computers, there was actually no information anymore because no one used, so say, were outdated in the 60s, 70s. Uh, the transition go, went into digital computing. So the only um, resources I found were on a website of Bernd Ullmann, a German scientist who worked with analog computer. I will mention him later again, where he published all the manuals from the 40s until 60s. And luckily these manuals were um, at that time, more than just the manual, they were really, they even have some circuits and explained and there are some really good sources to learn about these old machines. Some example here. Um, so for every operation, you have a special symbol and for complex calculations, you put uh, different devices together and patch your circuit. 
Uh, yeah, here's uh, the, the web address, analogmuseum.org from Bernd Ullmann. And yeah, so there was a question how to uh, get access to the hardware. Like I said, they, they were described in the manuals as well, but luckily there were some old uh, articles how really to solve the equations because you have to transform them in hardware that needs certain tricks. And um, there were some really good resources for that. Okay. The core of analog computer were operational amplifiers. Actually, they were invented for analog computers. Nowadays, operational amplifiers are everywhere in electronics. Um, they were, the idea was for analog computing, uh, you need a, a general purpose circuit that you can use for all kinds of electronic operations. So the engineers started to develop a circuit they called operational amplifier, actually an amplifier that could do operations. This is an early tube-based version. Um, yeah, certainly nowadays it's a chip, but these chips are uh, 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 still heavily in use. And yeah, this mo modern, most modern uh, semiconductive, technology, they are super small and powerful and so on. The basic principle is the same. They can do operations. The symbol of an operational amplifier is this triangle with a positive and a negative input. Um, depending how you connect these inputs, you can do all kinds of operations. That means you can add things, you can, uh, you can make integrations and so on and so on. In the early days, you had to, an analog computer had, well, let's say maybe it has five operational amplifiers. You saw they were big, they were expensive. And for every calculation, you have to patch this operational amplifier in different ways. Nowadays, because everything is on a small chip, um, yeah, there is no problem to use 10, 20, or even 100 operational amplifiers because yeah, they are cheap and powerful. Um, in 2011, I bumped into an article, um, the, the Chaos Machine, uh, by uh, Ambaum and Harrisonson from the Department of Metrology um, in Reading, University of Reading. Uh, this article was a lecture, and they tried to build an analog computer to uh, calculate a Lorentz attractor. Um, this was my blueprint where I thought, okay, I want to do that as well. And so I started to uh, develop my own system. And like I said, now op amps are small and tiny, so I could, I uh, came up with the idea, okay, then would be super helpful compared to old analog computers to have for every operation an own module. See, in former days, you had whatever, five operational amplifier and you patch them depending what you need. And I thought, okay, if I have um, for every operation an own module, then I just have to put these modules together for my calculation. That should be much easier. Um, 2016, I had a residency in Bangalore at the Shristi University of Art. And there I heavily worked on uh, confetti. So that's how I called the, my analog computer. And luckily I had some help from some mathematician to solve the mathematics. I can't go deeper into it. It's uh, another, I guess, another seminar to solve this. But yeah, but I also could finish the hardware and I designed for, like I said, for every operation, a small uh, module. For example, this is one for an inverting summer. That means um, it can sums some uh, three inputs um, and uh, on the right side you see an oscilloscope where um, actually now there are two um, two sine waves summed up to a third one and um, yeah maybe yeah you see in, in, in this module a nice feature I built in 
I uh, designed the module so they have a, a power rail um, and a bus system that should makes it easier for patching. And yeah, meanwhile, I have, I don't know, 20, 30, nearly 40 different modules for all kinds of operation. Um, the whole says, um, system itself is compatible to URAC. That's maybe interesting when I came later to applications. Um, but it's also a hybrid analog computer. So I have some logic modules like Schmidt triggers and so on. So you can combine the old analog technology with logic circuits. Everything is open source. You find it on my wiki, the null effect, like all my hardware and software projects. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, Bernd Ullmann published a fantastic book about analog computing. So if you are interested in solving the mathematics behind it, I would recommend his book. Um, okay. So now some, I want to go to some applications and maybe some reasons why I used or I wanted to develop this device and maybe why it might be interesting for you. First thing is analog modular synthesizers. That's something I um, started in 2001 when I made my first EMG or brainwave installation. At that time, I had to develop these circuits by myself. Certainly, it was heavily analog electronics. And to display some function, I had to develop some uh, oscillator, my first Wien Robinson bridge, so a nice sine wave oscillator. Uh, later, I transferred this into, I call it paper synthesizer. So a Eurorec um, uh, synthesizers. And actually that was the motivation to go into this analog computing because analog synthesizers and analog computers are basically the same technology behind it. And I figured out if I want to develop synthesizers, it would be super handy if I have a system where I can experiment and develop actually an analog computer. And you remember the example I gave with the water uh, and the stone that goes in the water. So if you have an analog computer that generates uh, a waveform similar to a surface of a water, yeah, if you amplify it, you have an oscillator, you have actually a nice um, uh, synthesizer. And with that, you can imagine if you want to have filters and different functions and so on, yeah, this was the idea behind the analog computer as a developing tool for synthesizers. That's why it's compatible in the uh, two UREC systems. Actually, in the exhibition, I have a neural network that is based on analog computer and it's connected to uh, UREC modules. Um, just to mention it later, when I started a oh, paper bits, it's another synthesizer project. It's, um, it's a further development of my synthesizers. Um, this is a bit different. It runs on fivefold. It's not so compatible to the analog computer, but nevertheless, it's a powerful synthesizer. If you're interested in, you find it on my wiki too. And maybe um, just to mention another um, synthesizer I lately developed before the pandemic hits. Uh, I call it symbiotic synth. It's a real small oscillator that is powered by body heat. So, and maybe here to mention, so I used it as a, a, a installation, a participatory installation at the Karachi Biennale in 2019. So there are five of these oscilla uh, oscillators. And yeah, it was pre-pandemic, so you had to use these here uh, um, headphones. So. I think nowadays it wouldn't be possible. Um, but yeah, because all the oscillators were powered by body heat, everyone has its own and we're sharing these headphones with the person to, next to him. And all the oscillators were light sensitive, so you could change the pitch. And so uh, this was a, um, yeah, 
every group could make their own small synthesizer con electric synthesizer concert powered by the body heat. Okay, uh, next chapter is chaos theory. Actually, yeah, that I mentioned this article at Electra, that was the reason for Unbound uh, to develop their analog computer. And that was also a field where I was really interested in. Like I mentioned, pattern and structures, chaotic structures are super interesting for me. Chaos theory appears in the 80s and um, yeah, everyone knows the Mandelbrot. Um, man. But another important aspect of chaos theory are strange attractors. That was something uh, uh, Lawrence developed. Um, it's a chaotic circuit or actually he discovered as a formula how different um, uh, layers in the atmosphere mix and how chaotic this behavior is. This was the beginning of a non-linear um, um, yeah, uh, physics. Before that, most of the physics was to find linear relations. And this was a breaking point where the first time someone described a non-linear behavior. And everyone knows the butterfly effect because these non-linear uh, formulas have a strange behavior. So if the uh, initialization condition change a little bit, they, they can do some weird stuff. That is the famous butterfly in Mexico that can cause a tornado in Texas. And the formula, if you, yeah, this, actually, if you run it on an analog computer and display it on, a, um, on an oscillo oscilloscope, it looks like that. And the actual formula that Lawrence discovered looks like this. So you have a lot of derivations. And that is good because there is one operation that analog computer can easily do, that is integration. So the contrary of derivation. And with that, it's possible to implement Edward Lorenz formula in an analog computer. In 63, when he discovered this formula, actually it wasn't possible because you see in the formula there are quite some multiplications, x multiplied with y, and here an x multiplied with a set. And in 63, uh, circuits for multiplications exist, but they were not precise enough. You remember this huge tube picture I saw, showed, this huge circuit? So it wasn't possible to actually implement this formula in an analog computer. Uh, Leon Schur invented a shortcut, this is another story, is a sure uh, uh, oscillator, but like I said, it's another story. Um, so in, yeah, in 2011, we ha had chips that make precise multiplication. From there on, it was possible to implement uh, Lorentz formula in an analog computer. Um, this was a project Ambaum um, did. And this is something I did with my analog computer too. Here you see a schematic how you can implement the formula in an analog computer. Every symbol uh, is an own operation, multiplication, integration, summing, and so on. And actually you can go through the formula and say uh, x multiplied with y, and then you can see uh, this is this part of the schematic. Um, minus z, c multiplied with z, and so on. And then, so you can go, through, and all these connections, uh, um, yeah, um, follow these formulas. The only trick is that somewhere in between you have these integrators. That means if you have the derivation equal a certain x multiplied with y and so on, and if you make an integration of the result, you got set. Because it's a derivation of set is this multiplication, 
but if you do an integration, then you have set and that result you can put in the next formula and so on. Oh, you see it's complicated. So, but nevertheless, it worked fine. So I uh, have an example for uh, a, vi a video. I will see if I can share that. Let's see. Okay, sounds fantastic noisy, how I like it. So let's see if I can go back to my presentation. Okay. How then my confetti modules look like. And yeah, in this case, certainly, when I build a Lawrence attractor and it worked fine, and because I have the technology, I figured out, oh, I actually can voltage control the whole circuitry, so I can change the pitch. And so I built two of these Lawrence attractors, one that is really slow oscillating, and that controls the pitch of the second one. So a codec circuit that controls another codec circuit. Yeah, that was what you were listening to. And oh, maybe I, yeah, I guess that's that. Yeah. So, okay. So here I'm going quickly some through because uh, um, I use this for uh, creating feedbacks. And this is an example how I um, uh, created some feedback loops between local and, and now in streaming times. Um, uh, uh, even between, uh, 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 actually it was an exhibition that took place in two cities in two countries in the USA and Canada. And I created a feedback between these two uh, cities. Okay. So um, you find uh, so, yeah, certainly everything on my web page, but uh, talking about feedback, I certainly have to mention Norbert Wiener, and that brings me to the next chapter, cybernetic. Um, I developed this analog computer, and uh, um, and some years ago I figured out actually it's a fantastic tool to implement neural networks, analog neural networks. So the idea behind was. Yeah, um, I did all these analog um, sound systems, but all the visual systems, I developed uh, liquid projectors, all kinds of analog devices that create pattern and so on. And I always ended up um, um, putting some digital structure behind it that controls it. Not the Lawrence attractor, but most of the time. And then I thought, um, yeah, but neural networks would be perfect for a controlling system. And um, I, you know, I try to develop a circuit that behaves like uh, in, in neuron and its purpose to um, get an analog controlling system. No, but Wiener des yeah, describes the idea of as the cybernetic itself, um, actually in a time when tubes came up and he, um, yeah, he described even just an amplifier tube could work as a neuron. And um, the background is um, we discovered that our brain actually 
is nothing else than a lot of neurons that actually just do some uh, receiving signals and firing signals. And obviously, in their complexity, they, yeah, they are somewhere uh, in intelligent appears. So uh, the idea was how could we mimic something like this and maybe get uh, also some intelligence. And yeah, the last 20, 30, uh, 20 30 years, um, humans try to implement it in a digital system because it turns out actually you need a lot of neurons to get some good results. And certainly computers are, um, digital computers are good if you need a lot of, if you want to simulate a lot of things. And um, yeah, my approach was maybe try it with an analog system. I come later to it. Um, uh, but the, the basic idea was, okay, you have a neuron that has a lot of inputs and outputs that can go to a lot of other neurons. And in the neuron itself, there's nothing else than a, whatever, a kind of summing function that um, at a certain level uh, will fire. And this primitive a system can create intelligence if you have millions of them. Um, and maybe in this content, I think, yeah, it's always good to show a cat, but I I think there's a huge misunderstanding with to call systems like this artificial intelligence because actually there's not so much intelligence in it, but and like Norbert Wiener said, the best material model of a cat is another, or preferable is the same cat. And that means, yeah, a model is a model is a model. And it's a model how our brain could work. And yeah, it's good for pattern recognition maybe, but to call it intelligence is a bit too much, I would say. Okay. But coming back to the neurons I designed. Um, Yeah, it is basically like I described before. It's a, yeah, you have an input, a summing input. So you all the signals that come in were summed up. And then the function is an integration. And then you have a, actually some logic behind it. Logic in the sense that it can turn on and off a comparator. So it checks uh, the integrator if there is a uh, sum is strong enough and then it will fire or not fire depending if it's an excitatory or inhibitory neuron. Um, this model is based on San Sun Ichi Amari's idea. He's a, a Japanese a mathematician and he came up with a model of a neuron that could explain actually our heartbeat. So it's um, in our hearts there are neurons uh, thousands or maybe millions of neurons and they all oscillate and they could synchronize each other. So they need something uh, specific. And he came up with, with a model like this, where he predict this allows to oscillate if you have more than one neuron and these oscillating neurons, you could synchronize and actually it works perfect. They oscillate and say the oscillating neurons I could synchronize. And a side effect was that Sanichi Amari described is if you combine them in a complex way, you can create pattern as well. Okay. So that all of this worked perfectly. And because I I knew I want to use them for creating sound, I designed the circuitry itself that these neurons um, create also a triangle wave at the output. They create a, a square wave because they fire or not fire. But at the integrator, I got a beautiful triangle wave and with that I could really build an, uh, yeah, a synthesizer. I 
I call it as a pre-modular synthesizer because every neuron, neuron is less than an oscillator. One neuron does nothing. But if you combine two of them, you see here two different ones, and actually I designed one circuitry and you can patch it as an inhibitory or excitatory. And if you put them together in a loop, they start to oscillate. And um, if you combine that in a weird way, you see here a, a small uh, picture, then you, I could create really pattern like one has in a sequencer. And I did this um, 2019 in Seoul. Um, and the uh, similar version is now uh, yeah, in the exhibition, in the Audio Blast exhibition, where you see these circles. These are neurons patched together uh, to create pattern. And here you always have two neurons that create an oscillator. And the interesting thing is if you put three neurons together, they can make some weird oscillations. So the big difference is just the speed. So depending on the rate of the connection, in my case, that's the resistor, the size of the resistor, resistance, these neurons are oscillating slower or faster. And certainly if I want to have an audio output, I patch them so that they are oscillating in a hearable frequency. If I want to have sequences, I patch them that say, uh, yeah, make sense in, I would say more in a rhythmic or in a structural sense. And um, in the network, in the exhibition, you see most of the time that in the circles, the LEDs turn on and off in, yeah, in a regular pattern. And on means the neuron is active, and that means it fires, or if it's an inhibitory, it's not firing. And yeah. And the nice thing with the setup is the first thing is it's compatible to the analog computer. That means um, whenever I need whatever, maybe an extra summing function, because I think, oh, I have here two oscillates or oscillations, I want to sum them. Yeah, then I take uh, a module from my analog computer, build it in, and I can uh, sum the signals or whatever, filtering and so on and so on. So I, in the exhibition, you see, yeah, 150 neurons, but the other 100 volts are from the analog computer that work as amplification or scaling amplifier or inverting amplifier so I can, um, uh, change the signal depending how I want to have the sound. I can, uh, in this here, I, I uh, build in a lot of sensors. So um, that inject um, uh, sensory data from the environment. But here to mention, it's not an interactive work. It's a reactive installation. That means depending on the environment, the sound and the structure will change, but um, yeah, it's not meant to interact with it. And yeah, okay. I think I'm anyway a little bit at the end of my presentation. Maybe just to mention uh, the neuron is certainly described on my wiki. But you find it also in Nicholas Collins' latest book. There I wrote a chapter, Sound from Neural Networks, where I try to describe how to build the circuitry and everything. OK, so then I will come to an end. I just want to mention the Unsinkable is uh, my performance I will have at the weekend at Pitch. So if you're interesting, I'm, I think it's a stream as it's streamed as well. And yeah. So that is, uh, thank you. And yeah, are there any questions regarding the topic? I guess there are tons, but maybe some I can answer. OK. 
Okay. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean, um, I asked if there's any question. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, we could give a um, couple of minutes. So Thank you for your talk anyway. That's great. Mm -hmm. There's probably a ton of questions, um, in, but maybe people need to think about it. <laughs> yeah, but then, anyway, uh, like I said, it's such a huge topic. I guess I could make three seminars just for that. It was more really I to have this brief overview where analog computer come, what I did with it, and even was looked a little bit into mathematics behind it and so on. But yeah, I know it's complicated. It took me years to develop everything. So. Mm -hmm. And what what do you think about the, the, the development of the quantic uh, computers in regards to... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a funny thing because they are similar to analog computers, actually. They are more similar to analog computers than digital computers. Um, they are kind of sim simulation machines as well. So I, I, I mean, I'm super interested in it, but so from my perspective, they are not yet at a level where we can DIY hex them. And, but if there is a technology to do something, Similar, I would be the first one who tried to do it, but but I guess uh, yeah. Now the experts and the big money is working with it, but I, I see some relations between quantum computing and analog computer. Um, mm. yeah. we, we are always talking about quantum computer are for encrypting, so that looks like, oh, it's a kind of digital device, and actually it should encrypt some digital encryptions, but in the functionality, they are more similar, I would think of similar to analog computers. Okay. Um, so some people commenting, hopefully my environment will change and I can go back in time and get some more headphones. I think someone is talking about pong rocks and still using my sony walkman headphones earphones <laughs> anyway uh thank you very much Wolfgang. see you saturday uh, online and physically okay. yeah maybe on friday so yeah then <laughs> yeah. all the people the audience now will uh... yeah the audience maybe everyone i hope uh saturday and I hope we see us tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> In <Lord. laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to move on now to Andre. Andre Perim is there. How are you? <laughs> Fine. I'm here. Oh. Uh, I want to, first of all, I want to apologize for you because I'm lying in the bed because I'm, I'm recovering for a surgery, so uh, oh, wow. I can't be I can't be sitting because uh, I I have an open thing here, so I'm lying in a bed, so it's not the best place I can be. Wow, that's very courageous of you. Thank you. Yeah, this <laughs> first of all, I, I'm going to talk a little about this because this has something to do about my production because. I am, well, I am a musician and I, I, I used to play in the formal way. And uh, four years ago, I went to a hospital. I stayed one year in a hospital. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm treating a cancer. My problem is this because, but I'm, I'm okay now. But I stayed one year in a hospital lying in a bed and uh, I started this changed my way of producing music and uh, well I started to go away from music and start to work in, in multimedia all, all the and to communicate via 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 web so I, I, I was used it to play alive and so I, it's funny because uh, 
just a moment later started the, the, the pandemic. So uh, I think it started a little earlier for me. So I have to find a way to communicate and to make art uh, in the internet. So uh, uh, it was uh, a different way of work. And um, I think this led me to what I'm doing now that is coming out, going out of what I understood as music. This work I'm showing here, which is called Unwanted Sound Appreciation Method, is the first work, big work I made uh, using basically noise. Oh, no, let's say not just noise, but I'm not using any any instrument in a orthodox way, which as I thought, or oh, I use in a a piano or a synthesizer, synthesizer. No, here I I started working just with uh, uh, basically a, a interference uh, from FM radio transmissions and um, traffic airwave transmissions. I, I found a, a site that they transmitted from. I live in Brazil. So Rio de Janeiro, and I found a site that they transmitted the, the, the arm waves uh, communications. So I started to work with this. But what I found interesting was just the, well, the, the interferation. What, what normally I was, I was thinking about this is noise. And, uh, well, I, 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 I think I worked with, with uh, I found two, two different definitions of noise. So one, I think it's the, well, noise as, as something that breaks the discourse. And uh, the other definition which I used more is, was uh, noise as musically talking as, um, a sound that I can find uh, an, an, a specific note. So um, I took those sounds that I recorded and put into Max uh, MSP. I'm not, uh, let's say, a great programmer in Max SP. I'm starting to work with, with it, but uh, it gave me a, a good, uh, I, could, I, I could transform do, those waves or do, those noises in, in pulse. So um, let's say I started to make music uh, out of rhythm. So rhythm was the, was the, the, the the principal, the main aspect of, of it. And it was different kinds of, of posts. And I started to do something uh, there. I use several techniques, uh, different techniques. And I, I I'll talk about um, which one of them. First of all, um, the name I gave to it, the title, Unwanted sounds appreciation method. I, I wanted to put some kind of humor, let's say in it. Uh, I didn't want to to make to to be taken so serious because when I was were working with noise. So um, well, when I say humor, it's not that I I. I wanted to sound funny. It's not funny, but it's not so serious. And uh, well, I, 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 I wrote a test, a text that is almost the definition of, of the work. And I used that test inside the work. So the test, uh, I say, an impressive and exhaustive collection of useless procedures for 
performing precautions obsolete paraphernalia, spontaneous disintegrative broadcasting, and an ostensive diary of an obsessive accumulator of noise and another acoustic annoying phenomena. It is uh, mainly a definition of the work, but uh, it, it gives, gave me the idea of uh, an open work. So I can do a lot of things uh, with this and uh, I have more or less a format that I can work with it, but uh, it can change. And the, the, I was very, I wanted for a long time to work with text, with words, and it was, well, for me, a, bit, a little bit difficult because English is not my first language. My first language is Portuguese. And uh, I decided to, to use this as uh, a tool. So I took this, this text and translated to other language and came back to English. And I did it, did it several times. And uh, as I could uh, use this transformation, um, in analog form at what I was doing with the sound. So the sound was transforming and transforming again and retransforming. And I did the same thing with the text. text. So uh, it's funny because the, the translators, they tend to, uh, to have a meaning no matter no matter what it is so they, they tend to, to 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 give a meaning to it and it was it it changed to be meaning meaningless but they gave it it gave a, a meaning so uh sometimes it was funny because the, the the text turned to be another thing and another thing and another thing and i also i also use it some text that I, I've written first in Portuguese that is called, uh, it's a process that the Dadaist and the Surrealist use it, uh, like, uh, I, I think in English it's, it's valid words, that's words that you, you, you put together one word with another and make a third meaning. And so I made this in Portuguese and translate to English and to other language, and the, the same thing. It gave other meanings and other meanings and some kind of nonsense that I think it was very interesting to what I, I was looking for. But uh, I didn't put this sound. I, I recorded the text in, a, in the narrator, so I have the, this very formal voice from the computer. And uh, I didn't put these sounds, the read and test text as on the front. It was behind. And so this was idea, an idea that I, I liked a lot because uh, the meaning or, or the nonsense the the atmosphere of meaning or nonsense is on the background, so uh, it doesn't matter too much if it makes sense or not. I'm I'm I, I, I'm working with words at the same as sounds uh, transformed, being transformed, and sometimes makes sense, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Uh, like the the, the 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 sounds itself, so it's it's it became um, I don't know a, a very a very pleasure field for me to 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 work with. It's uh, it's uh, I think it's it's it it was it was uh, this way. I uh, this path I started 
talking about that going from music from something I really don't know what is what is it and I'm very very happy and feel very fresh to to not knowing to have this open space to 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 use the, the, this thing of uh, uh, that was we are talking uh, here of uh, transmission and transmission and the and the, the interference sounds as uh, a tool and, 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 and as a raw material that I, I can make um, another kind of, of uh, 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 structure that are different from those I've, I've learned of harmony and the sounds have to be like this or like that. So it's it's very and, and and the thing is when I talk about noise, the thing is um, I started to look of these. I put it as a quote, let's say, noise. I started to to hear as a, a special kind of sound. It was it wasn't it wasn't annoying and. Uh, this work is, is very low. I use the sounds, um, very tiny sounds. So uh, it was very, it was a new place for me to work with uh, those materials that uh, before I could understand as annoying, as something annoying, as a, noise because my former understanding in what I learned in music school, etc. Uh, noise was an annoying sound. It became another thing. It became, um, it's like uh, I got inside the, the noise and uh, the Interference sound is very, very useful for this because when you put in a, I use the, the Max MSP, when I put inside it, um, it turned it to, to, to this world of, of, of electronic pools that, that was, when I heard this, I, well, well, this is music for me, this music in itself, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So um, that's is uh, that's what two, two techniques I use. But uh, the third thing I started to, to to use was to take those sounds and uh, understand them as as data, and I put it. I turned it into MIDI, into MIDI notes. So the the I think it's it's the it's the the same movement backwards. Now I'm I, I'm getting the sounds, the the noise, as sounds, as as as, as notes, and I put in a, in a piano MIDI, and and uh, it turned to be as uh, for me as a. Uh, like that was uh, a virtuoso pianist playing it because it it, it became very uh, intense uh, uh, displaying, and uh, it's very funny because I didn't play anything at all, and 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 so it's it's like accepting that the the rhythm and and the pulse. They can make harmony also. So I I, I will try to show here uh, just to 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 simplify a little bit of uh, what uh, let's see if if I can if I can. Yeah. All right.
so uh, you can hear, you can see here um, almost this thing, the sound, the noise, and uh, the respective uh, translation into MIDI, MIDI notes. So, uh, and uh, it, 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 it sounds sometimes as, as it was really a piano that was played, but, but, it, but it's, it was not. Um, let me see if I have the, the, the solder here. Okay. Uh, just wait, wait a minute. I, I... I think this is the same, just... Oh, yeah. So... An unimpressive and exhaustive collection of useless procedures for performing precocious obsolete paraphernalia, spontaneous there's integrated broadcasting, and an extensive diary of an obsolete accumulator of noise and another casting annoying phenomenon. An unimpressive and exhaustive collection of useless procedures. Precocious obsolete paraphernalia, spontaneous death integrated broadcasting, and an extensive diary of an obsolete accumulator of noise and another county annoying phenomenon. <laughs> So, so that that is the the, the main idea. Uh, two things important to, to note note notice here is that uh, I use the Max MSP um, sometimes almost as a, as it as if it was a turntable for the, for the DJs because I took this this text and I keep it uh, turning over and repeating and doing loops in several uh, parts of the text so I could change it, it meaning and um, this is it's very interesting because I, I can uh, reproduce this work and, and I, can, I can I can show it, it again in a live situation where uh, those results of the, the text can be different. Any time will be will be another thing because it's not something that's not uh, programmed. Uh, so it's it's uh, 
something that I, I can, that's why, uh, why I say uh, this is not a finished work. This is a work that, that I can, uh, I always put more things and go deeply uh, uh, in the process. This, this process can go, can go on and on and on and on and on. And uh, that's, that part I showed, it's a, a, a woman voice uh, talking, which is something we still have in Brazil, but it was very common uh, back in the, the time that, was, that, 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 that wasn't internet and, and it was uh, one kind of... Uh, how can I say, uh, a radio that we, 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 we call it here in Brazil, Rádio Relógio. It's, uh, it's like a clock radio, and it, and it stayed uh, second to second. He says, two hours, two minutes, zero seconds. Two hours, two minutes, one second. <laughs> so it stayed, and it was uh, in between. They 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 talk a little about some news, but very very few things. And it was an, an a habit people have to 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 turn up the radio to to know what time it, it, it was. If, if for us this. Today it's really well. It doesn't make sense for us to 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 have this, but I I found it in internet. This service still works. You still can find you, you can find a, a site in, in Brazil where you have a voice telling you minute after minute what time is it. So it's it's really funny. Well, uh, I think uh, the basic idea of my work is that I think um, I, I hope you will see it tomorrow to listen to it tomorrow. And I think that's it. Yeah, it's, thank you. It's, yeah, it's tomorrow at uh, eight p.m. Yeah. CT time, obviously not your time. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but uh, I'm okay with the, <laughs> the difference of time here. So uh, just a little question. So how, how, I know you, you've been saying that uh, you haven't, you, you haven't played live for a while in, in physical space, but how is things happening in Brazil at the moment with the, uh, the artistic and musical scene? Is well, it restarting we, a bit, or um... we are very warm people, so it's very difficult to to this this uh, week started. It's carnival here. <laughs> mm. It's carnival time. Although uh, the government, uh, so we we won't the, theoretically won't have carnival. Uh, people are on the streets. They're they're not uh, having to. They have is a little bit serious, but not very serious. And I think the thing, most of the the cause, because I have a government which doesn't, they don't, the government don't believe in the virus. <laughs> yeah, of course. They, they, they are negationists. So they, they, they say it's not all, all of that people are saying and uh, since the beginning uh, we have that problem i think if we we've had a, a different uh, approach uh, things here would be much better because mm. uh, most of the time we have the the health department working in one way and the government in a different way so it's, it, we have a fight here we still have this fight and the, and the, the well the the government itself they they claim for the liberty so if you don't want to to have the the the, the medicine okay okay it's your right so it's a problem and we have the the these things getting worse because 
we are in a in a year of election, and and here it turned to be uh, right and left, and negationist and non-negationist. So it's it's very very difficult here. So it's uh, people are playing, people are playing outside, mm. and um, it's very. I think it's very difficult this because uh, at the same time. Um, there was a uh, few uh, uh, counterparts from the government or in the states to or what the musicians can do when they are not working. Mm. It's, it's very hard. And, and, uh, I don't know what will happen in this weekend because it's, it's, uh, it's carnival and there will be, we have the, the block with Michel, the, Huge, huge people in the street, and the legal blockers. They said, "No, we won't go out." But have the legal, <laughs> the legal ones. Mm. People say, "Oh, let's go out the street. Let let's go to the street." Yeah, so cool. it's very, very difficult here. We, we we are having a very difficult time here. Mm. Yep, well, it's complicated, and here is uh, becoming complicated too. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it's different because of the here is is almost forty degrees. I think we uh, is it the, wow. Yeah, I think the warm weather and nice beaches. Can people well? Ah, I can go out, no problem. <laughs> I think so. we don't have oh, okay in the south of the of the country we have this, but in the rest of the country we don't have the uh, 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 let's say. Uh, a winter that's very, very, very heavy. So okay. people, yeah. uh, we, are, we, are, we are, we are, I think this is very, it's a, it's a, it's a problem that people are facing here because we are, we are very warm people. Mm. So we like to, to, to embrace one another, to kiss, and oh, my friend. And we, we are facing a moment that we can get away with it. And it's, it's very new for us. It's very new. It's becoming yeah. very hard. I, I, I have a lot of friends that they are sad because not having this, because we are used to this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, 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 it's difficult. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much, Andre. And um, of course, we, uh, we will hear your music uh, tomorrow. Okay. All night. And uh, I wish you good uh, recovery. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That was good. That's good. And we could hear your music uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we are now going to receive um, Elviatr uh, that should arrive in one minute. And um, while uh, I we're looking for wait a minute, there you go. Yes. So she, sorry, there's been a little cut. I put myself back. Um, she presented a video uh, in um, an Audio Blast exhibition this year, and uh, we are waiting for her to arrive. I'm going to put a photo of her work here. There you go. So that's, uh, that's an extract of a, of a video. And... Um, Basically, um... oh, there you go. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I cannot see you. There's only, okay. Yes, I put, um, I started to put your, uh... there you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I started to put you, your, uh, an image of your, uh, of your video. Great. Of your yeah, I came at 3.55 p.m. exactly, so. Very good. Yeah. You're looking great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, I'll yeah, well, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I want to just say, I don't know, do you, you are French, right? Yes, I am French. So I should well. say bonjour, <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, to all our New Renaissance fans. Uh, I'm super excited to meet you all. Um, enchanté. <laughs> ciao. Yeah, ciao. <laughs> <laughs> How it's going now? It's going fine. We already have like um, three people on the panel with three mm -hmm. different projects. And um, yeah. yes, Al, do you want to proceed? Do you want to uh, talk about your work and uh, your approach? And then uh, if there's questions, we could uh, work on that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, first of all, I want to ask because, you know, North Italy uh, to France is not so far as we know. So, <laughs> so or I will arrive very soon, or next time we see each other <laughs> in Nantes, <laughs> or yeah. somewhere in between, I don't know, like, um, I don't know, in Metaverse maybe, and we maybe. will talk about masks, okay? <laughs> or in Milano, you're based in Milano, no? Yes, yes, but uh, you know, nowadays I'm based in all over the world. In New Renaissance, oh. there is no boundaries, so uh, we are like, um, no months right now right digital we can be yes. in any place in the world and we can connect so it's perfect absolutely <laughs> yes, yes but you know but however i think that the mask is uh, are very important because um it protects us from uh electro smoke you know and yeah. from all our viruses which is super important in the in the in the present times because you never know who is uh observing you and which influences yep. like which um transmissions are are going through your through your body through your mind through your heart we should you know protect this um precious in us <laughs> yes absolutely yeah and 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 you know those uh, wavelengths they honestly going through uh through us from from many devices mm. you know not not only from humans but from many devices and I don't know if you noticed, but 5G, it seems like it's already reading our minds. Mm. Like, if you think about something and you, you are not talking about it with no one, and then you see, uh, you know, on the Google or somewhere else, uh, like the ad. How is possible if I never talk about it, you know, and tell me, have you ever noticed this? Mm. Well, the fact that today 5G is... Uh interactive with interacted with my brain and it brings some yes yes i think it does with electricity too you know in the basic uh 50 hertz you could hear voices yes. and yes. Uh, in the in the beginning of the talk i i uh, explained that radio was used to listen to ghosts you know okay uh, keep going <laughs> So there is a frequency around the 14 megahertz that allow you to communicate with the dead you know, and to hear it, interesting, it's, it's, interesting. It's a theory about it, and that's why it was interesting. Neuro relation to uh, mm -hmm. the frequencies and the uh, frequencies of the world of the universe. Very interesting concept. And did you discover something like you know personal meeting? <laughs> no, I I am not a ghost hunter, as okay. per se. You know, uh, yeah. but it is. I don't know uh, personally yet. You know, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. We just we are just chatting. Uh, yes, for now. And, uh, but uh, there is a, a lot of researcher uh, that have been doing books and recording, talking to the dead people. Mm. Um, yeah, it's called EVP, elect, 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 uh, electromagnetic voice phenomena. Wow. Electric, but yeah, you see, so you somehow the five G. What does five G does? I have no idea, but it's probably talking to somehow something in, in the universe. Yes, you know, this is superpower, right? So if they can read our minds, <laughs> it's better to be a good person, you know, <laughs> with the pure soul and heart. So you, then you don't have, you know, you don't have to uh, be afraid about mm. your own uh, thoughts, right? But what I want, you know, to tell you, what I love about this festival, um, you know, is the fact that uh, it's all about this new Renaissance poetry. Um, 
which I believe this kind of um, futuristic radio can um, somehow unify all humanity. You know, especially with our current situation in the world. Like I cannot, you know, I can and I cannot understand how it's possible that there is some summer war in 2022. It's yeah. you know, it's shocking. So I I strongly, uh, you know, I I believe that we can uh, create in art, in sound art, specific vibration, the new new Renaissance one, which can transform our reality. It's it's very important uh, to move with the art through the mm, territory you know uh, where where we are one and and there is a peace in the world because i i believe that uh, only the artists have, uh, have this power uh to to unify all nations <laughs> like um in our times i um it, it's crazy honestly because like uh i i would never thought that that it's possible it's like in present time uh, where it should be peace we should only be concentrating about creation about creating the new world and still we have this low frequency vibration in my opinion uh, which shows our state of um, of our spirit so probably we should speak with the, you know with those uh, um, dead people with with this algorithm you said before and um gain this um this uh ancient knowledge which is very important to proceed with the future with the bright future because i think that uh in previous times we uh we were more future orientated than we are now i don't know if you are interested in uh in um, ancient architecture for example or ancient music do you? Uh, personally? Yes, <laughs> obviously. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, uh, I, I've been uh, looking at instruments in uh, in cave in prehist prehistoric time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For religion and in what the vibration, South. what vibration yeah, yeah. Did, you, did you feel? Like, did you feel something? Oh, yeah, it was... Uh, have, uh, you, have you felt like, like uh, not that you are only near to the important monument, but, you know, uh, like specific vibration frequency. Well, the thing is that you know it was like a museum, so you had to go. But it was interesting because it's one of those uh, grot in uh, south of France where they discover. Yeah. Uh, and so it was, you know, you had people and you could visit and you could access that part where the yes. vibration of the stalactites and where they were doing mm -hmm. religious sounds and. But I was exciting, and it was really like an experience, you see. But uh, yeah. you need to spend more time to feel the energy, definitely. But this is the connection with the uh, prehistoric time towards Baroque music, for example, the vibrations or the voice in religions towards... Yeah, the, yeah so I... The, the new Renaissance sound <laughs> art, which I presented, because I'm the protagonist of new Renaissance art. Um, and it's based on artists who is the art at the same time. So we are all art and artists. This is very important concept about, you know, future and present in, in art. Because before art was, was what artists created. And if you think about this, that you as artists um, are creating something, this art came from you. So you are this art. So we are the art. You know, yeah. and uh, with this concept, you can feel that your life is art. Like we are not doing just one field of art, which is, I don't know, sound music. Like every single thought, feeling, moment is art. So, you know, that's why you can appreciate our lives with yeah. this ottica in Italiano, with, with this, you know, view. It's, it's very important, you know, and I thought, uh, you know, uh, that I answer all questions already with with um, um, with the interview on the catalog. Yes. And I think we should talk about French cuisine, like, you know, because <laughs> string theory could be based on Italian spaghetti. So I'm, I'm curious about 
what's going on with the French? Like, uh, the although, French. You know, I'm, I'm, yes, uh, with the uh, yes with French cuisine because um, <laughs> I'm I'm saying vegetarian, but I I have to you know claim you're vegetarian that, but no vegan. No, listen, semi vegetarian, but with one exception, which okay. is foie gras. <laughs> and it's oh. one of my favorites, yes. And uh, you that's, know, a, that's a wrong frequency. I definitely. know. <laughs> this is this is this is like I always try to think that no, it's not what I what I'm thinking, and I'm really like um, I I even if I you know you know when I'm in very very fancy restaurant and I see this on menu, I suffer not to order, but you know. I'm trying to develop myself to, you know, to switch maybe to butter croissant <laughs> or, <laughs> or quiche, which is buonissimo always, right? <gasps> yeah, yeah. I mean, you're right in some ways. People could uh, read the catalog. It's full of ideas. Uh, and I yeah. think uh, we could go in phases. But I would say no, the metaverse, right. the metaverse yes. Yes. is the French camembert, you know? Mm, interesting. So you have to Not think motorella. about <laughs> yes, and uh, and the baguette. If you want yes. the baguette, yes. is the extension of the universe. Mm, okay, so it's, look, it's, there's it's a line. Making, you mean? People making giant baguettes that like spend yes. and it spend yeah. when it cooks. You know, so Italians are doing you know um, long pasta, like a long pasta, yeah. or, or you know even pizza. They can do long for making new records. So. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can compare this to the string theory, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not sure I'm the best uh, uh, French guy because I'm uh, part of Italian, you know. Okay, parliamo italiano. Sì, io parlo italiano, ma come ma senza ma. La mia nonna è italiana. Sì, è toscana. Okay, allora, certamente sì. sei un italiano doc. <laughs> sì, va bene. Uh, so, uh, yes, I'm but how do you speak so well English? Come on. Oh, you know, I live in London and okay. stuff like that. But, but I'm not okay. important. What's important is what you say about the cooking, you know, mm, because yeah, this I is was, the most important. I'm, you know, yeah. I born I born in Marseille, and mm. we have this conversation with uh, the family yeah. that the best pizza, yes, are in Marseille and the bigger, you know, and the biggest. The biggest, which is like how big? Can I eat it by my own? <laughs> I in one minute? <laughs> I can't show it on the screen, you know, it's so big. It's you bigger can send me then. after, in private. <laughs> but if there is bigger pizza in Italy, I want to know where. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You know, I'm very picky about food. So um, in Milan, I spot just two places, which is perfect mm -hmm. for pizza. And or you know, from originally uh, it's from uh, Naples, so uh, oh, okay. the restaurant is is you know like you are entering in the center of Milan, like you are entering the Na Napoli. You know, <laughs> it's it's quite interesting. So it's like almost like metaverse, right? Like <laughs> you don't know where you are sometimes. <laughs> I know. Anyway, uh, yes. but. Let's talk about uh, new renaissance art sound of spheres. <laughs> yeah, because right? this new renaissance and everyone yes. being an artist. Yes. Uh, because I was introducing the futurists uh, okay. uh, in the conference and talking about the the Russian invading Ukraine and then seeing that Crazy. 100 years ago, they yes. also had in the 14, 1914, 1918, the First World War, and then mm -hmm. after, in the 18 to 20, uh, 1920, they had the Spanish flu uh, pandemic. Yeah. And it's sort of like a hundred years recurrency, you know, coming back on us. Yeah, I would even say, sorry to interrupt you. Well, no, 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 go on then, go on. Ukraine has particular position of uh, Saturn retrograde, which means that um, last 30 years, are years to um, to see if they develop themselves enough. It's like you know, Saturn is an archetype of of father, of God, of of somebody mm. who who is always watching. So, what did you do for past thirty years? Now you have you know, or present or gift about your well behavior, or you are in great risk of losing everything. 
And um, it's not like, you know, the war happens by one day. In my opinion, they, um, they, uh, pre they were preparing uh, war or coronavirus or anything mm. in certain time, <laughs> you know? It's nothing like, you know, like this. You know, nothing happened like this. And at the same time, everything happened like this. Because if we live in quantum uh, theory, in quantum physics, in quantum me mechanics, so it's, you know, this theory is based on that, um, that everything is like in one point, right? And in this point, you have strings, you have waves, like, and there's no time. So it's, it's hard to say that there's white or black, there's this or that. But we can somehow um, calculate through as astrology, for example, as I said before, something, you know, something which show you the potential, the potential of a uh, situation which we are living right now. And what we can do, in my opinion, again, as an artist, as an art and artist, is not to fight, but to find a way to higher frequencies in the world. Because if we are on the higher frequency, the world will respond, you know, with the higher frequency as well. Like I can strongly, um, highly recommend you uh, the David uh, Hawkins. I don't know if you know, it is yeah. not Stephen Hawkins, it's David. And he, um, he um, presented the scale of uh, consciousness is super interesting and you know you can read about him you can read his books you can uh, you can listen his um his records and then you understand on which level we are on the fear on the on the war on the suffering which is very low frequency if we go further to uh saint people for example like like i don't know like jesus christ krishna buddha so on they they had so you know powerful energy that the people want to gather through them to just be near this energy because this energy is a love is is a peace is uh, acceptance is willing is uh, willingness is everything so again in 2022 we should be you know free totally free and have this peace to create as you know the pyramid of maslow if we don't have base we cannot go up and our um our dimension of our life should go to the self actualization <laughs> if we are fighting how can we you know have time and peace to create it's impossible because when we are creating we need to be in the peace, in inner peace. Even if we are suffering, I don't know, somehow about heartbreaking or whatever, we need to feel safe in our environment to create. So we should go up, not down, you know, with all our development. So Otherwise, how do... we are back, back, backwarding all the time. How, how are you doing that? you every day on everyday life basis how do you uh, synchronize i'm wearing sunglasses <laughs> every day <laughs> which is you know <laughs> it never rains in milan <laughs> no. <laughs> it's never rain wherever i am never rain <laughs> um you know uh how i'm doing this um i think that and I feel that we need to harmonize our thoughts with our feelings, how we talk and how we walk. Everything should be one. We cannot think about something and then, uh, and then you know, speaking about something in a different way. We have to be coherent and to have this solid uh, self, we need to always um, breathe art, the new renaissance art. So with every choice, with every thought, see 
the possibility to increase, to expand, to find the new ways. You know, this is this is super important. So, yeah. for example, Ella Viatra, myself, <laughs> spends her time like uh, there is no time. So at the same time, I'm reading, I don't know, 22 books and the same time near to my bed. <laughs> I can, then I can see you uh, photograph how it looks with so many fields. Then then I realize that the inner truth is inside us. Like we cannot be based on somebody's opinion on the medicine, on the news, on the even art. It's important to have our own new Renaissance art. You're personal because you are the individual and you are unique. So your own thoughts are the most important, your own feelings, because it came from you, you know? So like any person is so important in the world because everybody, like every single person has its own unique talents to discover. It's just, you know, what is important, it's important to switch, change, evolve, all we have to do revolution about, about system we live in. Like in the schools, <laughs> you know, I, I was in many art schools, okay, academies of fine arts. And I have to tell you that uh, it's incredible. Like they want to repress your own self in art schools. Before I was in normal school, you know, primary school, secondary schools. But, you know, I thought that when I will go to Academy of Fine Arts, which is like synonym of, uh, of absolute freedom, then you can realize your full potential. And no, there are many teachers who are not artists and they are not developing their own self. So they try to put the boundaries on their students. So I quit like three academies of fine arts, you know, <laughs> because what I was presenting, it, it, it was, it was far from the point where they are, where they, where they want to be, because they want to be in the history of art, not the new art, you know, we are doing the new art, new history of art. Uh, you just, you just, you just open yeah. a whole, uh... A whole box for me because I'm I always like this. <laughs> I uh, I teach uh, ten years in art schools and fine art, and I had a disagreement with a, a lot of teacher exactly for those reasons. And uh, I already I, love you. <laughs> I already I quit. I quit, yeah. and then now uh, I'm not teaching there anymore because that's I agree why you are you. here because probably yeah. they will be so jealous, envy that you are. Prepare, presenting something you know new that you couldn't you know live there with them because, because all you are like all of them exactly. they don't do crazy. anything anymore they stop they're just being teacher they teach pe people students art without being artists themselves 100 percent 100 and then you're and, like yes you're absolutely right and now we have to ask the question how teachers who are who stop being an artist or never been, how they can teach new artists, new potential, yes. if they are not by their own, if they are not open, wide open about any ideas because art has no boundaries. Exactly. It's a trend. So they are, they are teaching a trend. It's horrible because after that, so many artists, they don't have a job. Why? Because they thought that the life will be a trend. They are not yeah. presenting nothing new and they are all the same. And mm -hmm. I was always telling to those uh, students, you know, my colleagues, like you abandoned your, your authentic self, you know, yeah, absolutely. because, you, because yeah. you wanted to fit in, because you want to have a good mark. For example, I remember yeah. when I won the first um, uh, competition national in the painting and then Academy of Fine Arts, the, you know, the, 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 the professors gave me zero for the painting, telling that I'm supposed to, you know, to, to be normal student. I, I'm, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't <laughs> take any 
competi- yeah. because they never won any, you know? Exactly. It's a, it's so the system has to has to be changed. So only, in my opinion, an artist who gained the full potential, full realis- realis- realization. So, or um, that every step to fulfill himself or herself um, can teach. Um, in uh, other words, uh, it means that when you feel that you are ready to teach because you did all steps possible you know and then in your in your in your um in your work as in your work as an artist then you can teach otherwise you cannot teach you know because you don't you don't um you you are not prepared probably those teachers are still students, if, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, completely. They, they never cross boundaries uh, to, um, to, um, to study art in the different ways. You know, they, they you never... Know, it's exactly what you say, because when I was uh, teaching uh, the students in, uh, yeah. uh, in the first years, I was opening them to sound and intermedia and videos and different form of art. It was art. too much. <laughs> uh, no, they love it. Most of them, they love it. And Others they embrace, said it's they too embrace much. It because they're ready for it. But yeah. then third, fourth years, then they, they have the old, old men and old, old people. Old system, again, conservative. Not artists anymore. Old in the mind, eh? it's not all, uh, you know. But yes. And they were like, say, okay, now this is finished. You're going to pass the diploma. And to pass the diploma, you have to be a normal, classic oh artist that do the thing in the right box and not go and change the world. Clearly yeah. not. Sorry. You know, kisses and, for, for them because they are lost, you know. It's like yeah. karma. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing. Karma will fund them. <laughs> You know? Yeah. So I'm I'm compassionate. You know, I'm very sorry for them. I w- yeah. I, I always yeah. been because I'm where I am, and they, you know, and yeah. you created this uh, this amazing platform that now we can even communicate and speak about the, you know every kind of uh, of field about art. And if you would be this teacher, um, now it's better like to be the teacher as you are now you know now because now you are presenting the new way of thinking this is the new kind of teacher and yeah, you are I'm free sure. no one can tell you what you have to do yes exactly it's amazing hey Elriot, thank you very much we're gonna <laughs> go to the next artist okay. uh, they are in in, in in us in california i think yeah you know that we didn't speak about video art so much, but you know, <laughs> I... the first meeting, the exhibition is running for another two weeks. Yeah, uh, it's well attended, and uh, people are reacting like in a very good way. Perfect. So, uh, it's it's just a first meeting. Don't worry mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. You know, art is very personal, so um, we have to trust and honor our truth in new Renaissance art. It's yeah. very important. And remember about self-actualization, our self-awareness. All the time. Every single moment is art. So, ciao, ciao. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Merci. Bye. Bye. Grazie mille. Grazie. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. <laughs> so, so, we, we now... Uh, uh, Receiving um, Paolo and uh, Grisha. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Hello. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, and so I'm Cassie. I'm here in California, Riverside. And Cassie is in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. Superb. And I will leave you the panel, the panel and then you can present your work. work. Hey, yeah, we are talking about our work, so, uh, right? That's the goal from this uh, meeting, right? Absolutely. 
Okay, so we are very happy to participate in this event. We are both uh, we are both uh, artists and and uh, and researchers. So I, I teach here at the University of California, Riverside, and Cassia. She teaches at the University of São Paulo. I'm a I'm a basically a composer, primarily. Cassia is a flutist and working. We are both very connected with technology. I live. Uh, 20 years, 25 years in Germany before coming here to California. So I, I was very excited to, with the Klebnikov because this is, uh, the, uh, this kind of poetry is being very, is very also cultivated in Brazil. We have great uh, concrete poetry that, that are, have been translated, uh, Mayakovsky, Heblinikov and all these uh, people. And you know, one, a, a very important thing about this uh, uh, these poets is that they they came uh, on the after the, the 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 communist revolution in Russia, and they are so Mayakovsky has a phrase that's very typically said: "Without a revolutionary arts, uh, uh, no, a, a revolutionary art needs a revolutionary form." So they really connect. The experimentation, the the research on on the new forms of expression, new forms of language, with a very strong belief that the society could be better. And today, when we see what's happening in Europe, you know, we see this the same the same the same situation, the same situation that been there for many centuries, there. And we see this idea that Klebnikov. Uh, tells that the rage of the culture will be the central tree of our consciousness, that the rage will, will connect people and we, we, we will create a different kind of consciousness that we can, we can be together. So in this, in this text here, Rage of the Future, he, at the same time, he, 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 he uh, drafts a very, very hunting, uh, very hunting pictures of what is radio and and you know like a spider of webs of lines a storm cloud cloud of lightning bolts and so on but at the same time it brings a very spiritual uh, uh, message and a message that spirituality with knowledge and that's i think this is the this is something very important because you know we need a very spiritual uh, uh, attitude the consciousness to connect us and to see that we are as a, as a human race we are to, we are connected and we are together but at the same time we need also knowledge we need to also to you know to to knowledge to, to to raise up on the on, on this ignorance that we are we are living and what i think that's when i see europeans and americans talking about what's happening now in ukraine I see so much ignorance, so much misunderstanding, so much so much ignorance of what's happened after the history of, of this and, and, and concentrate on, on, on what's happened in the present. And these things are really, really very, very large. For example, you know, California here, what's our California? California was Mexico. You know, for 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 200 years we are in Mexico. Now it's West, and you now and you know. U.S. took California, and you know nobody talks about that. You think you, you, uh, California is West, but was not. It was Mexico, you know? Texas was also Mexico. So you think things change, the countries change, and and uh, what is what is uh, what remains, and what is the essence of things? You know, when you talk about moving, moving, moving borders, moving frontiers, moving things. This is part of what uh, our humanity is. You know, I'm thinking I'm <clears throat> we need really to think much more deep in our attitudes and, 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 and the, the, the relationships that, that are in the world and the things that we put on the world. Because it's very easy to say anything, you know, to say, you know, this guy is a detector, this guy is that, this guy is that. But... We needed to see the whole history. We needed to see how the people connect and how we are in the in the in a situation today that we have atom bombs. We have atom things. We can destroy ourselves. 
So it's very nice to think about, you know, we are doing art, we are connecting people, but at the same time, we are also contributing to destroy our, ourselves. And also to any technology that we develop has always a, uh, an ambiguity. Has, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a knife with two, two blades. One blade we are, we are cutting and one blade we are cutting new things and one blade we are also cutting things that are very, very, uh, uh, very important uh, to us. Anyway, so I am in a very, <laughs> I'm in a very, I feel myself in, in a very charged moment because what things in the world, it's really very significant, significant. And when you see ourselves, what, what is our, our, what is our role, what we can do and what we are doing and what is the consequence of what you're doing. Anyway, Cassia, you want to say something? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, hello. Here's the morning. Maybe you should uh, turn off your microphone because it gives echoes. Turn it what? My microphone? Yeah, because it oh. gives echo maybe. I don't know if it's my, yeah. Yeah, now it's working better. Yes, I'm here in Brazil. I'm here in Sao Paulo. I saw André that I don't know him. And uh, maybe the question about our life here, our lives here, that uh, Julian made, I have a different feeling. I feel now it's a hard moment for the artists and for everybody in the street. Uh, it's increasing the misery. I'm sorry, but uh, we have a kind of war here as well, in Sao Paulo at least, and Rio de Janeiro as well. We are not in a very easy situation with the pandemics because the vulnerable, the vulnerable people, they don't have anything to communicate. <laughs> and then I don't feel that it's normal and I feel it's hard for everybody everywhere. But just uh, giving my, my vision of uh, what's happening here. In fact, the art, uh, the, the musical world is starting to come back, but still it's not normal. And, um, and I hope um, that it will change. I also would like to, to say that I'm, I'm, I'm teaching at the university, but I, yeah, I'm pretty new at the university. I was a flute player in the orchestra, in the opera house for 20 years. And I hope that I'm not um, killing my students. <laughs> no, we are looking for uh, expression and uh, the telematic music helped us very much. That's what we are doing with Paul to be together. We are doing a work together with Paulo in California and our students also did some things together. And that um, I think it was, it is nice. That's it. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about our work precisely. So I'd like to show some, to share my screen, but I don't know how to do that. Can somebody tell me how, what I have to do here to share my screen here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. See if you move on your screen below, there is a, a little panel with a, a red phone hanging, microphone and video. Yes. I and there is that. a stop, stop sharing your screen. I have a more actions and I have invite people, performance sets, view for screen, security options, start a recording, start a lot, mute everybody. So I see a menu here, but I don't see how it's share screen. I see participants, I see raise, lower your hand and close the chat. Okay, I don't see how to share video. Oh, share video, is that? No, it's not share video, right? Um, on, the, on the normally, uh, you have like, first one is mute and mute, right? Yes. After is like start stop camera. Yes. And for me, oh, start, start sharing your screen. I see now. I see now. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, okay. Okay. So can you see now? Oh, yeah. I share. I'm sharing my screen. You see some four pictures here. Uh, is that possible to share just a program? Now I share the whole screen. Yeah. You see some pictures here. So this is how we start our work. We started to work in 2019, just before the pandemic. 
Yeah, and so we are. We went to the desert of Mojave, Mojave or Mojave. I'd say Mojave, but it could be Mojave. And so, and then you know, I have been working since three years uh, in a project called Sound Imaginations. That, and this project is uh, doing recordings all over the world. I went to Russia, to Brazil, to Germany, to India. You know here in California, and I did 3D videos and, and ambisonic recording. So I wanted to capture this surround, surround environment, both with uh, image and with sound. And this is what's the idea of the project. And, and so I did recordings, I put the camera and, and create really hours and hours of recordings. And this is, the idea is, is to, is to, uh, is to, um, research the cultures of listening, how you listen to the, to the things, how you listen to people, how you listen to machines, how you listen to, to fight, how, you listen, how you, listen, you listen to violence, you know, how you, you listen to, to the work. To really, so there is a, the, 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 the way we listen is related to what we do and, and what, what, how our, our, our relationship to the world. You know, we are, we are also we communicate with plants. We communicate with the desert. So we let what is listen to the deserts. That was the the idea here. We we entered there, and then this is you know this is Cassia. This is, and then there was a January two thousand nineteen. This is the place where we are. It's not so close. It's not so far here from Riverside. It's like one hour one hour uh, drive. And we went there, and then we put a, a camera. You see the camera, and we put a microphone. Uh, the the camera is a 360 camera that captures everything surrounding, three, uh, above, below, all the sides, and the microphone does the same. And Casa is there uh, with a, a bla bass flute, and. And, and, and play, performing, doing a real performance in the, in the desert. And, you know, that's just, you see here the camera and the, and the, <clears throat> the microphone. You see here. Yeah, and then we did that. And this is, we, and then how we, that's how we started to work. And then we, so, we, you know, she created some sounds. She made some sounds there, improvising. Here's a 360 photo. And after that, I took the, the, the sounds and create a, a soundtrack and create a score. I wrote a score for flute and electronics. So we work with the software Max MSP to do live processing. And, then, and the idea was to present that live, to do a concert. Casio was planning to do a concert in Sao Paulo. Yeah, that's a beautiful photo. Let's see, see I'm putting the microphone and Casio is there trying. And then, because of the pandemic, we started to work telematic. Not to be much, that, but telematic is something that I have been also doing since many years. I wrote many, many articles about what is telematic, what's telematic music, because telematic music is a kind of chamber music. It's a kind of music that people are are uh, are talking to, uh, are uh, um, uh, playing with each other. But there is it's mediated through the technology. So the technology that brings sounds, that brings image, but it brings us together very much like the radio is. And, you know, and then we start to develop a, a sort of statics of telematic music because it doesn't, it's not only, uh, it's not enough just to play somewhere, but you have to, to, you have to think how is the sound because the sound is compressed if you play off the internet, how you make a better sound, what is the image, what you're seeing, you know what what you wanted to present, and then that's what we have been developed together. This uh, this concept of the uh, telematic uh, audiovisual immersion. So we wanted to to create a sense of uh, presence, uh, a, a sense of when you go to the concert, you are immersed in in some in a in a world of sounds, in a world of image. When you are when you are here online. That it's a different kind of space. It's a space where you are not sharing the space with other people, but you are sharing some things. What you are sharing, and this is this is the this, the things that we have been uh, exploring, and you have been looking for. 
Maybe Cassia can talk a little bit about her experience as a as a performer and as a, as an artist, and how is this in a in a in a setting of uh, um, in a in a in a presential setting in a telematic setting? How you feel that, Cassia? I think it's uh, yeah. We are we are dealing with um, new capacities, and uh, I feel what is nice is that we feel close to each other. We feel close to other people when we play together in other groups as well. I think that's the nice thing. And uh, myself, I, I'm learning a lot of different uh, uh, how to deal with uh, apparatuses and uh, machines, all kinds, different types of machines. So, and it's also, uh, to me, it's very important that uh, we are not still on site. We are not presential teaching. So we can keep uh, with our students in this way as well. No? This is nice. No, Paul? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but how was it for you playing this, this desert here, this in this landscape of the desert? For, I, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it was really a, a first uh, experience with um, improvising in the landscape. Um, as I told before, I used to be a, a, a first flute in the opera house here in Sao Paulo. So uh, this uh, a new age for me, as um, I forgot her name. Uh, the girl who was talking here before, the Italian artist, it's a different moment. It's happened a lot of things different. And then just before the pandemics, I, I met Paolo and we were doing this kind of experience. So uh, playing for the words, playing for the sounds that are coming from the soundscape and reacting to this and letting these the sounds to come inside myself was kind of mystic experience it was very nice you know i would like to talk a little bit about immersion because immersion is a very it's a very popular word today and so i have a very strong experience of immersion when i was 17 years old because i was in brazil, brazil was a dictatorship brazil is all is still a military a country dominated by military, you know, the democracy in Brazil, it's a, it's a joke, you know, it's really a joke. We are, we have a, a president that's, that's a sort of puppet from the military, but in, in the, in the, in the 60s, the 70s, it was a real military in the power. And they have a really, they, they kill, they kill hundreds of people and, and hundreds of young people like me at the moment, they were fighting against the dictatorship. And I went to prison, and I, in the prison I was tortured, and I was tortured with sound, you know, because the American, the American uh, military, they developed, uh, they are very, they are really good with uh, sound torture. They still are, are very good, and they de developed the sort of they call the, the refrigerator. It's it's a cabin completely acoustic, isolated, with uh, speakers all over in all walls. And they play very loud sounds. This is, was in the 70s, before the computer. They play sounds for like motorcycles, like noise and all kinds of things. And, you, and they put people there very loud, many, many days. You go crazy. You lose your consciousness, you know? And, then it, and, this, is, uh, and this is still happen today in the world. The, 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 the American military complex has, has, um, has prisons all over the world. And they torture people. They torture people with sound. They play sound days and days. So what happens when you play sound? When you play sounds, if we are here exposed to sound, to noise, our here, we cannot talk with each other. We cannot, we cannot communicate it if you have loud sound. And that's, that's the principle of, because we, we, are, we are in a sort of environment, a vibrational environment. We need the acoustic space in order to, to articulate our language. If you don't have the, 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 the acoustic space, if the acoustic space is blocked, blocked because we have too much sound, we have too much loudness, we have too much noise, we cannot communicate. You know, then this is a kind of immersion. It's a diff it's a complete, it, it, this immersion, so 
this is what I want to say. The immersion can be something really very liberating that brings us to a different conscience, like Klepnikov tell, that the radio will open up new ways that we develop our spirituality, our, our consciousness, our relationships to the world, our relationships to ourselves. But it can be also something very oppressive, like, like it is. You know, sound is being used as a weapon, as a weapon for destroying subjectivity of people. And this is, this, is, this is always like that. When we are using some technology, we are communicating some way, we are using the, uh, this data to communicate, this, uh, the, the big data of the internet, we are exposing ourselves to a, to a very ambiguous situation where we can bring people to, the, uh, to encourage people to develop new ways to be conscious, not by we can care, encourage people to develop uh, new forms of oppression and new forms of, uh, of, of, uh, um, uh, of creating uh, violence, you know, of uh, taking advantage of it to others and all that uh, that we know. And this is, I think this is very important when, when we're always thinking, working with new things, trying new things, trying new, new technology, to think, why are we doing that? Why do you want to say what kind of, what kind of, uh, um, what kind of uh, uh, things we want to bring to the people? You know, and that, I think this is very, very present in, in, in our, our work both in terms of our person, personalities, our individuals, and the way we connect to each other. Because we, we, uh, there is this great uh, writer, Roy Scott, the British. He was uh, one of the pioneers of telematic music. And he said, telematic is love. Because we, 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 what connects us is not this, the technology, it's the love, the love, the, 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 the the feelings that we have to each other and the, the, the way we, we, we treat each other. And this is the principle of that. And I would say also the principle of radio is also that to take the electromagnetic waves of the, of the atmosphere, have these dreams, you know, we can connect people. There is a very nice, uh, very good, um, uh, very, very important author is Douglas Kahn. He wrote a very nice book about uh, about radio and how radio is an exploitation of the magnetism of our planet. You know, I, I really think, I even think about that. And now we have this idea of internet, which is, we are not exploring the electromagnetism as a radio, but we are exploring the idea of connectivity, the idea that we create different kinds of consciousness and bring other kinds of consciousness to our world. Anyway, I'll stop talking here. So, Kasia, if you want to, do, <laughs> to add something, please go ahead. No, I want to thank you very much for everybody in this uh, festival for taking us to present our work. I hope you enjoy and uh, I hope to, to be here watching the other stuff. And thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your talk. It's, it's very, very nice to hear your views also in Brazil, um, to, to think about also what Andres say and what you say, the context. Uh, there's been a lot um, from the art to the context to the political issue, and we could see how uh, art and politics are connected together and you can't separate them. And then, um, yeah, of course, um, uh, Douglas Kahn and Roy Iscott uh, are very important for the field uh, in his research. So it's great that you bring that up too. And then uh, the work in the desert. So you 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 playing? You will play? Um, when do you play? You play tomorrow, I think, or uh, no? Yes, yes tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow at uh, six afternoon here in Brazil. Then uh... in. Uh, Ten in the evening. We yeah. can't hear you. <laughs> Paulo, you should open your. Oh, sorry. Tomorrow we play at 10, 10, uh, 10 p.m. to uh, twenty-two hours. Yeah. Yes. Van de Zer. Van de Zer. Van de Zer. That's true. <laughs> so um, we, if there's any questions from uh, the audience, I think uh, probably. Uh, 
a lot to assess, but it's very well connected to the other talks we had before. Uh, and so um, to have another perspective and uh, also on the sounds as a weapon to torture and uh, this issue uh, that music and sound could face in their relation to manipulations by the, um, the, the military, which it seems that we're talking with Jenny on um, another chat about the geopolitics are very strong this and they're taking over all our conversation. We can't avoid it. So, yeah, thank you for your talk. Okay, thank you very much. We are looking forward to play tomorrow and to perform. Absolutely. That would be great. <laughs> thank you for, for the invitation. Yeah, thank you very much for to, to come with us. Okay, I, 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 will have to, I have to teach in 10 minutes, so I will leave the, in a couple of minutes, I'll leave the meeting because I, I, need, I have to. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. But I'll stay a couple of minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we will uh, welcome uh, now uh, Sylvain Soucle, which is not here. So, <laughs> and uh, so I, my intention uh, is to present his work uh, and see if he showed up uh, for this talk or not. I will present a... Uh, his work. So um, I'm going to display one of his of his work image um, uh, straight away. So and I will present to you uh, his research. Okay, so it's very dark, but Sylvain Soucle is a Brooklyn based French multimedia model artist. So is working a lot with sampling and intimacy. He presents this year in Odo Blast uh, a work with the with this relations to sound, and I will explain more why he did. And but he's a, a performer and a an, uh, work on collage of individual memories uh, retrieved for an VI the audience. Uh, so he's a He's a self-taught artist, and he began to work uh, with vandalism in Lyon, in France. And uh, so, his his research is about the uh, digital art installation today using field recording techniques as a narrative layer, while pursuing his right path. So he's also writing text, and I'm going to read some extract of his work. So it's, it's a performer mainly re in related to the use of unsettling intimacy. So that's the pieces presented at the exhibitions uh, is a volleyball as 10 is called Liquid Soul. So together but separate, in situ omnipotent, the self or the many. So the civilizational space design dictates and control identities, genders, religions, colors to maintain order. Who are you? What are you? Where do you come from? This trimivirus is the fundamental mechanism of human interaction and then articulates our collective behavior. We'll have all been given flags, frontier, languages, and architecture that hierarchize nations, groups, families, and individuals. They only exist to establish a productivist classification and an artificial narrative written by winners. What if one doesn't want to be situated or accepted or secular situational structure? What if what one thinks, feels, and has inner certainty that is not part of the parameter available? So in this project, Sylvain Soucle presents uh, an attempt to disconnect our soul or intimacy from the succession of moral, economic, and societal constructs. This project was built around the contradiction between direct live transmission and schedules liveness retransmission. So Sylvain um, 
was not uh, sure that he will be able to perform this piece live in Helsinki uh, in 2020 because of the travel restrictions. Spoiler alert, he didn't go. So still, he wanted to recreate the moments of the performance, the digital space blurred, the live between direct live the transmission and scheduled liveness retransmission because the moment of streaming is the core of a modern liveness. When Sylvain performed this piece, he decided that transmission was an intention and a transmission plat a platform. So we inquired a bit more about how Sylvain did develop, Sylvain Soutclay developed this piece and how did he work on it and how did he work performance and and then the relation to the the sound and the, the ambience of the space that he's recording in and uh, so he spent eight months going into a float tank uh, and he learned how to listen to his body and the water rhythm so he chose to work with deprivation no light no sound only darkness and itself and himself and the anonymity anonymity and the intimacy of the experience pushed him to let it go. It is finding a state of being, something close to where we are before birth with our moral, political, religious, ethnical and national function. So it is a performance and sound with music, as music, sound as music, at the same time. When he reached a balance within water and darkness, the fluid nature, nature of the movement is the expression of an organic instrument. The body, in this context, the voice, is an improvised confession or an epiphany. The nothing was premeditated, but the choice of articulating thoughts and feeling operate as a performative monologue. So liquid soul, uh, piece that Sylvan presented is presenting at the exhibition of Audio Blasts in Nantes was recorded as one of the uh, in one shot inside this float tank. And there is no production moment or recreation. It is a representation of fluidity and manifestation of intimacy. So, in a sense, there's a relation between the poetry and the sound work and the words and the sonic phenomenon are one. The poetry or train of thoughts are an attempt, is an attempt of the mind to temporarily regain control of the water and the darkness. It is a primal way of expressing the absence of the self, the others, and the civilization. So, Sylvain Soucle's story as to survive if, even for a few minutes. His history is personal, is general, even if no one is listening. His work has been associated with the Radio Associ Associative RCT in Villeurban 20 years ago, a structured vision of transmission from Monday to Sunday he had to daily, uh, he had a daily radio show, La Backline. Saturday evening, he had a show from 23.59 to 5 a.m., almost five hours during the night. Being alone in the studio in front of the microphone and talking to the unknown was an act of transmission. So you don't know if someone is listening or even caring on the other side, but there is a necessary to reach the other, even one person. This is what the human tribe is about or used to be. If those words spelt in the middle of the night can reach someone and stay with that person, it is worth it. Talking about the concept of identity and the refusal of normalization, Sylvain told us that identities as a subtext for intimacies and in this piece identities are the entry point to a space without a permanent self-definition so he helps 
that the identities can escape hierarchical or panoramic measurements to become a guide, not a destination. Identities are modular and granular, individual and collective experience. It is fluid and we should play with it, like with pay, pastry, a mudley, pata mudley. In, in his work, identities are a mosaic made of water and darkness, not a self-portrait. So in a sense, normalization is everywhere. And I think, to even think, the challenge is to create ephemeral spaces to breathe and grow an immune system to reach those lost in the machine. There's a refusal of normalization. There's not, there's a sort of like, is there, there's not a refusal for normalization. And, uh, and Sylvan learn to argue, fight, and then walk on it. The people, i.e., rich, want to reach are in the middle of normalized space because they're not, they do not have the economical choice to escape. And it's not a deserter, which is where it exists to give rooms for the people to take a break and see beyond the mundane. For that, Sylvain had to be on the battlefield and his hand in the dirt. But living in the belly of the beast in New York, in relation to the form of resistant capitalist categorization and society pressure, Sylvain have a, a more tense relationship to, to this concept of capitalism, which is, in a way, capitalism meaning death, especially during the pandemics. It is evident for him as a newcomer in the city. So this topic is endless. But briefly, explore, to explore the relationship between art and the digital, the digital space is not neutral. It is a capitalist and pressure-friendly ecosystem. Sometimes we have to think that we must use digital engineering spaces as an artist. We do not have control of the culture or the agenda of the social media platform. So we tried to implement our forms into a socially controlled environment and ended up following a capitalist design and pressuring ourselves and other without knowing it. Nevertheless, uh, um, Sylvain thinks that the, the digital space designed by artists for artists and art audience are necessary to embrace a meaningful and harmless way to continue our journey. Non NFT centric or marketplaces space could provide the moment to create a dialogue be because change starts with someone else. Modifying our individual relationship the screen and our collective body behavior are crucial elements to plant the seeds of frictions that could become a seismic reaction.
so after these uh, presentations, uh, we are gonna. There you go. We are gonna move to the next uh, speaker. I uh, hope you could hear me, Jenny. Yes, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I could hear you very well. Uh, so Jenny Pickett is part of uh, APO 33 Collective. She's also a PhD student in Mad Lab in uh, Cyprus uh, University of Technology. And she's going to project, uh, pr present one of the projects we've been working on uh, for many years uh, called Radinos Collective. And it's going to be um, a DWO, uh, uh, do it with others, uh, process uh, is going to be shown on Saturday in, online and in beach with um, participants that are going to join the, uh, the collective. So I uh, leave you the panel uh to present this project okay thank you. thank you uh so i'm first gonna start by sharing the screen or sharing the right part of the screen uh, okay do you see this yes we do and, oh well. Okay, so um, I've worked with uh, Apo33 and Julian Otavi since 2009. Um, I'll leave you a bit that to look at. How do I also see my notes at the same time? Probably have to open two of them. I have to open. Like, when? What do you see now at the moment? We we've seen the Archi Sonic Research Group, which is really good because we presented a bit before. But okay. Yeah. So you see the Archi Sonic Research Group. Uh, uh, oops. <laughs> a little technical problem. Uh, Archie Sony, I talked about that a bit earlier. And um, the image you've seen previously is uh, in relation to uh, one of the devices we developed um, about transmitting sound through uh, electromagnetic loops. And uh, people were able to mix the different loops, different sound, by moving a platform. OK, and... back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome back. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I'll try to put back the presentation and, and not cut it off at the same time. Hold up. Bear with me, suddenly the technology becomes too complicated. Um, Okay, so it won't share anything. Why? We could see that. 
but uh, we can't hear you anymore. Your microphone is off, it looks like. We're actually playing with the transmission now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So I wanted to start by talking about um, this uh, um, Audio Blast Festival of the last 10 years and a little bit how we've developed uh, different types of radio practice before I just talk about um, the uh, Radio Noise Collective, uh, the radio, uh, radio Noise Collective on its own. So um, for Audio Blast, uh, it started out just being a festival that was entirely online um, and then uh, bit by bit it also started to be something that was presented in the physical space as well here in Nantes so mixing live performances online here with uh, with live performances happening elsewhere and it's always been a festival that for us has had a global context so today this feels something that's very heavy and very strong but also very positive at the same time for art and artists and uh, transmission. Um, when with the Arshi Sonic group, uh, we started to also want to um, have more time, more broadcasts um, and uh, retransmissions of uh, audio blast uh, uh, projects uh, in an exhibition space. We started to think about how we can um, play with those devices for transmitting. So we started to build different radio um, transmitters using cheap materials and found objects to start to, to think differently about the, the way we present uh, online and offline transmissions. So this, uh, this first one here um, is uh, sort of mobile receivers that could be pushed around like doors of perception sort of things um, that are receiving um, audio blast uh, live performances and historic performances through uh, um, through antennas uh, that we built to uh, transmit this using a uh, tin foil so a very cheap uh, medium to use it to conduct the radio waves um, the idea also was to work with other people, was to, to collaborate more and to create more space for collaborating uh, with, with the transmission devices. So um, I'll just move on to one that was a couple of years ago, which is more classic with the, the radio collection that we have that's also used in, uh, in the group, um, also redeployed in the group uh, Radio Noise Collective. So APO33 has a, a huge, well, huge, has a large number of uh, radios and ghetto blasters that have been collected over the years from secondhand shops, uh, gifted, found, whatever. Um, and uh, in this exhibition, it was also transmitting uh, audio blast performances uh, on three stereo transmitters, short wave pirate radios into the space uh, where they could be re-picked up and uh, redeployed in different different ways in the exhibition. And in this year's, I don't have a great photo. Um, there's a more interactive uh, thinking with the radio where the, uh, the radio has been dismantled itself, the receivers, um, and uh, the transmissions uh, 
can be tuned using light uh, and interactivity directly uh, with the, the people that enter the space. Uh, Julian might want to talk a bit more about that. Yes, no? OK, well, so, so basically, a lot of the work that we've done has been around, uh, around re-hacking also the, the physical transmitting of things between radio, between internet, between online, um, and something that became even more uh, apparent during the uh, <clears throat> pandemic. Obviously, we also had the space empty without public, um, and um, that made us also think again a, dif a different way we could collaborate with uh, the space, the sound, transmission, different spaces, and radio and pirate radio, um, and uh, and ecology, and that led us to building a, also uh, this transplant mission, which was. Uh, was basically sending uh, um, citizen BAM transmissions across the city uh, from the APO 33 studios to the exhibition space, where it was filtered through the growing of beans and a giant receiver to catch it. Um, and here in this exhibition, we had also invited uh, some uh, other local artists to propose a radio piece to be transmitted in this way in a collective way through the uh, through the device um, and uh, prepare a score related to to that to that project um, which was then with masks and distance uh, reinterpreted uh, during a, a, um, a moment uh, that the exhibition was able to open so um, it's been very important uh, in uh, in our work, generally, uh, to think about uh, collective practices. Um, it's not something that uh, um, that we do lightly. It's like uh, for, for APO 33, there's a lot of projects that involve uh, involving many different artists and public and people that just generally come along or might find themselves hazardly in the <laughs> wrong space or the right space at the right time. Um, to to get involved with different types of material, mediums, and uh, performance um, in the in the public space, in the social space. So it's a it's very social and transmitting type of art practice, and that's a transmission that isn't like I'm going to teach you one thing, or you're going to do it as I say, or we're going to perform something in a specific way, but more in a in a thinking that's uh, related to uh, um, somebody like John Dewey's uh, thinking of transmission, which is a, it's a negotiation of ideas. It's something that evolves with those uh, with those relationships and generations. Um, so Radio Noise Collective um, is always about working with uh, the people that are also in the space, the public and uh, the musicians and amateurs that want to participate, that come along specifically, that have done before as well, um, to use the radios as a, as a musical instrument in a way that um, has, been, has been used before uh, by the likes of John Cage uh, in uh, uh, Imaginary Landscape uh, 4, where he did uh, um, 12 radios for 24 musicians and one conductor. And that idea was also to take away the idea of the composer having control over what type of sounds and what was actually happening with the, with the music. Um, and that was, a, that was one of the first pieces that had no rhythmic section or anything in it, John Cage's, um, with radios. There's Keith Rowe as well, who's also used the radio as a as a musical instrument and uh, who we've worked with many times. Um, in Radio Noise Collective, it's also about, it's about that interaction of the, uh, the transmission between people, the radio, the interference of bodies in the space, the interference in the public space, the hazard uh, that might occur in relation to uh, fear or curiosity from the general public. 
um, often we're able to um, incorporate public into uh, some performances because uh, we have many radios and devices that can interact. And uh, for the for the uh, courageous, curious, they might also be allowed to explore um, these technologies in, in a similar way that the artists do. So it's almost like a, um, a discovering of noise and the sound as something that is creative, that's something that is complex, that's something that is also a language that we can understand instead of just uh, avert or be afraid of. Uh, so this is a this is um, what, uh, one of the pieces we did at 2019 at the Pompidou in the um, in front of the pavé. So here we invited uh, also radio collectives uh, or groups uh, in Paris uh, to come along uh, with their radios. So people bring their radios along as well and engage in the space and play with the space. So this is one of the the setups that um, occurred to create a wall of radio waves, noise, and then as the performance progresses and the interactions take place and people play with the uh, the uh, reflections of the sound, etc., and the public uh, can take all sorts of different shapes. Uh, in another context, uh, there was a festival in Jouet, Sur Aide, which is not far from Nantes, called Festival Déconnecté. So it's a festival uh, where there is no, no <laughs> where in, in some ways it's in contradiction that we're using radios because there's a certain connectivity related to those. But in this uh, space, in the nature, in relation to the trees and the insects as well, who also seem to get involved with this performance quite strongly. Um, there are also children, and, uh, and, uh, and they were some of the, the most uh, um, uh, curious uh, and able to play a lot with the different devices that might interfere with radio signal and create music from the noise. I don't know if you want to add anything, Julia. Let's go. I'm doing a lot of speaking. No, no, it's very good. You can continue. Uh, so the Radio Noise Collective takes different shapes in different places uh, with different people um, uh, that are on the ground uh, um, and uh, can be also something where people propose scores to be played or can be in relation to, um, a, uh, in this case, uh, both scores and a, uh, um, a derive, a ballad, a walk, a sound walk, if you like, uh, where the... the, the uh, the radio signals, transmissions, and interferences were, because we also have uh, devices for transmitting a very short uh, pirate radio, very localized pirate radio, um, in the in the public space, and uh, and that was moving moving around the city in certain areas with resonances uh, during the festival uh, at Stratford Strat, uh, forty eight times seven this year last year. Um, and for that for that piece, we were following a, uh, a series of uh, five scores that um, that related to um, different streams and rivers and flows, and uh, it was in relation to um, uh, the project uh, residency we had been working on there during the summer on the on the River Tron and uh, the um, relationships between those transmissions and transmissions of the Loire, um, and we were retransmitting certain recordings uh, to the Radio Noise Collective also as we move through the space. Uh, this I'm going to let Julian talk about. <laughs> okay, this is a workshop uh, we've been given in Cholet, which is also not very far from Nantes with some students uh, from uh, the art school of Cholet, and um, so we've been uh, building scores. So it's, it's always the same principle, uh, and except here, I involve students to write the scores and listen and play. So we have more time to develop, because sometimes we're the radio noise um, participant. We uh, we don't necessarily have the time to uh, 
develop a long time scoring work but basically i asked the students to uh, write down scores for radios and then we uh, we paste the all scores in a different part of the city and we perform in the city the scores with the radio and the instruments the portable radios of course uh, and so we erupt in the um, cityscapes uh, and we confront it with these radios uh, sometimes to take over uh, streets ambiance to sometimes being completely clashed by uh, some other lorries or urban uh, sound pollution because uh, little radios are quite noisy and and but they're not as loud as the cars or lorries uh, passing by so it's, it was very interesting to uh, think about the the city and the radioscape uh, within the city. Okay, so I move on to uh, 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 um, Radio Noise Collective Picnic at ElectroPixel uh, twenty twenty one, where uh, as 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 you can kind of see through the images. Uh, uh, there was a picnic involved with uh, the movement of radios uh, in the space along the uh, River Erdre. Uh, this part of the river in Nantes is very um, busy, uh, both in the river, but also along alongside where there's multiple cultural um, uh, spaces uh, from the, the place, uh, the City de Congrès, which hosts the opera, to the Lunique, uh, which is a sort of... Uh, a popular art center um, and, uh, and, and, and also Les Ateliers de Bitch, which is a more underground, um, open and diverse venue where we, where we, were, where we are also, um, which was also hosting Electropixel Festival at the time. So um, here there was a, it was, it was following the same principle of erupting into the public space. Um, but at the same time, uh, creating a, a sort of di um, contradiction between a tranquil picnic alongside the river with, uh, with uh, um, the movement of noise and sound that was also reflecting the similar types of sound that you hear from the water and from the, um, from the, uh, from the environment, like the leaves, the, the wind, etc. And then here is the uh, most recent performance that we've done, uh, which was an invitation uh, to um, to Rendezvous Demain, uh, which is um, by the Grand Café in Saint-Nazaire, uh, which uh, every couple of years wants to look at uh, the art of the future or something like this. Um, and uh, this year, last year's, end of last year's, um, uh, theme was, uh, was was based on sound art. But as the majority of the sound artists they had invited were also uh, artists who come through APO 33. Um, they uh, extended an invitation to us to uh, to uh, do a performance uh, uh, with a uh, with a radio noise collective at uh, this uh, venue ASKIP, which is uh, uh, based at the Art School of Nantes. So here, there were many people that came along to play the radios with us, um, many radios, but it took place in a, it's kind of a strange, strange, uh, strange venue uh, because you have a, a, a laundry <laughs> and a bar cafe and a sort of like art book space, um, as well as a kind of underground garage feeling. So. Um, you have quite a lot of different layers and different types of noises and different types of um, expectations on the space as well to perform in. Um, but as I was uh, talking about before, I mean, the approach is also integrating amateurs, uh, random public participants and, and musicians into, into the movement or the cloud of, of uh, radio noise and um, uh, composition. Uh, in the inner space. So uh, there's a certain amount of uh, instruction 
uh, for a score or idea for people to understand how to move with the radios, how to play the radios, how to tune the radios to uh, transmissions that we're also sending, um, and, uh, and how to interfere with those transmissions using their bodies, using cameras, using remote controls, etc. Et voilà. I think I've said most of what I need to say about that. So, um, <laughs> I'm not sure I have more questions, but um, so on Saturday there will be a performance at the Atelier de Beach and on live on the internet where um, we're going to have uh, three or four participants are going to join the performance. And so, except one that already done it, um, uh, the others have never done it. So they will bring their radios and then we will perform with them and do radios that we will have uh, with us um, for this performance. So we are ahead of the schedule. <clears throat> and so I was wondering uh, if... Um, Oh, uh, you could speak about the micro politics involved. Uh... Oh, that sounds like a good point. Do you want to talk about it? No, I think you should talk about uh, the micro politics involved in uh, uh, transmitting uh, noise and radio frequencies and catching uh, uh, the sound in, in the public space. Okay. Because there's, there is one reference, if you want to come and join uh, me. Uh, in here, yes, and I seems to be freezed um, on the transmission there, uh, but my sounds will work. But... I'll, I'll, I'll come back in. Oh, me too. <laughs> hmm? Yes. I think it works now. Yeah. Anyway, it's about transmission. And there is one reference that we could talk about, which is Tetsuo Kugawa. Uh, you talk about Kisra and John Cage. And I think the whole idea behind the Radio Noise Collective is to continue to push a few questions about the radio as an instrument uh, and define a project where beyond yourself as a, a an individual musician that integrate radio, which is, there's a lot of musicians doing that uh, historically, uh, we talk about John Cage doing composition and key throw, and then but there is no ensemble as such, and then or as there is some initiative here and there, but this is this is now also taking the the relation to the collectiveness, which you already talked about. Tetsuo Kugawa and the micro politics is something related to FM transmitter, and. Uh, the, the the interdiction of um, transmit transmitting uh, radios uh, in the ninth in the seventies in Japan, and uh, he's been working with um, the philosopher. I worked with um, Gilles Deleuze. I have a memory loss. Felix Guattari. Thank you. I was wondering if you were there. Uh, Felix Guattari and um, uh, the idea of micropolitics. And so he developed mi micro transmitter and organized a transmitting party in the, in the streets. So um, all this, they were doing a workshop together and then they were building these transmitters and then they were like playing with the transmitters in the streets as a cloud of transmitters. So uh, that comes to this micropolitics of radio 
receiving and transmitter. We use transmitter similar transmitters, but we also integrate the receivers as an instrument. So the micropolitics is about this idea that um, every little change, uh, everything you change in your life, um, little details and the political uh, aspect in your life will have a, a, glo a global em impact and we also change the way uh, things work. So micropolitics is not tend to try, it's not trying to have the big revolution uh, and changing the world, uh, but trying to change little details, little thing in, in, the, um, in the direct political environment. So in terms of radios, for example, when we involve people, we are also changing. We are, there is a random factor on Saturday. We don't know what's going to happen. There's going to people going to show up and then we're going to work together. And then we don't know what we're going to exactly produce. Sometimes we write score, like you say, but sometimes we don't. And sometimes we will be surprised. Uh, and then it will change our relations to our own performance and to the performance space, which is less individualistic, but or less constrive, but more uh, an open space. And micropolitics bring this idea that uh, this open space and this little uh, an unknown factors um, change the way your relations to the city and to the others. Do you have anything to add, Jenny? No, I think you said it very well. Okay, so very well. We, we all need to keep uh, making uh, big micro movements uh, of noise uh, in the streets to move away from the noise of uh, other less desirable things. Well, yeah, I mean, the eruption of uh, the radio in the streets as a cloud is always a uh, politically interested because the uh, it's the sound is more and more regulated uh, and the way it works in the cities uh, that is difficult sometimes to engage in the space and the sound pollution became becomes something uh, in itself and what why you brings in this relation is uh, is um, also a transformation of your habits so your habits became uh perverted and then uh you have a uh, another relations to the movements of people and um so i was recently hearing about uh in paris the targeting uh of the uh, sound pollution we talked earlier uh, with Paolo about the sound as weapon, but now there's a new uh, camera microphone that's going to appear in, in the cities. I think there's already some in the UK, uh, but this is new in France, definitely. Um, with the So you'll have a camera and then a microphone that will catch the levels of the sound. So if some, if some people weren't paranoid already. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, because there's camera and there's camera with microphone. It's two level. And um, this one is targeting basically what they say is they're targeting the the people uh, that have like a modified engine or a modified uh, um, motorcycle. Oh, you mean traffic cameras? Yeah, they're, they're traffic camera. They're in the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I mean that needs to be quiet. We had that in Nantes also, uh, for example, uh, in the 2020 with the rise of um, with confinement and the rise of uh, delivering food. Uh, there has been like, all these people uh, delivering food all over the city. And there's been after a while, not during confinement though, uh, after uh, complaints about the noises of uh, those uh, scooters and um, motorcycles so then they know they've been forbidden to enter the center so they were like shocked because they had to do all this delivering during uh, pandemic time confinement and suddenly they couldn't access the center so uh, and so they had to readjust 
and reorganized. But anyway, it's like the sound pollution is something in itself. And then the Radio Noise Collective is not playing with this because it's different. But the way we en interrupt the space is, is create this, uh, this movement in the city that changed the habits of the people. In any case, uh, we are now going to move on to the last uh, speakers, which is the Seals and Katrin Liberioska. Liberioska, yeah. Uh, and I think she's around and um, we're trying to call her. Huh? I'm Hello. here. Hey, um, Katrin. Unfortunately, nobody else is here and I can't speak for the Seals. All right. Uh, and they were supposed to be. Nobody said they wouldn't. I just sent an email asking if they were coming. We were yeah. in touch. But it's, I mean, three of them are in California, and it's not even 9 a.m. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another one is in Florida, and it's also pretty early. And then the other one who's in, oh, there she is. Yay. Yay, wonderful. <laughs> I didn't know that Jem was. Um, I think she was. Yeah, yeah, I've seen she was on the chat. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't know who Jem was. But she seems to be having trouble uh, joining the stream. Yeah, because I'm really a small part of this performance because um, mostly the seals is five wonderful ladies, and they invited me to join them with some visuals. And that has nothing to do either with the radio part. So, uh, so I'm just joining them with my visuals that join some of their visuals too. So, but will Jen, will Margaret be able to join us? There she is. Ah, that looks better. So this is Margaret Skedel. So this is the only other person who is in the West Coast. Okay. I guess in Long Island. Could she? Hello. Could you hear us? We've seen her, but she. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh... Maybe she's having trouble with the. Um... Yeah, I think so. Oh, she just disappeared. Well, but it's good we 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 a bit ahead of uh, the schedule. One minute ahead. <laughs> yeah, something I can do is so. Oh, yeah. Hello. Something I can do in the meantime while she, we wait. She, she's here. Okay, okay. Go on. Is um uh, as I can put a link in the chat and this is um this is the page about them i i organized uh with carol parkins of harvest works in new york this series called olap online live art performance and they were our guests at the end of january as julian you and jenny were last year and yeah, so um that's the harvest works page for uh, yeah, and and that's a community forum where where we meet uh, with people who do interesting things uh, live on the internet, and we started that during the pandemic, and so they were our recent guests. So you could read about that, and you could go to that if ever uh, Margaret continues to have trouble. Yeah, I'm joined on my phone now. It's very odd. I'm at school. I should have a really good connection, but uh, I guess I don't. So. <laughs> I'm on my phone now, but it seems to be worth it. Schools are supposed to be the best. <laughs> I know. I have like hot and cold internet too. I don't know what is going on. So anyway, here now. <laughs> well, the panels is yours. All right. Um, I don't know what to do now. Um, <laughs> Catherine, do you want to uh, ask me questions? How do you want to do this? Um, we could do that. 
I mean, but, have you have you followed? I didn't notice when you appeared, many the 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 presentations have been the broadest range. Some people I know are talking about art and, and light was all prepared, and other people yep. were like. Yep. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce her name, the woman from Milano. How do you pronounce it, Julian? Uh, El Viatre. El Viatre, yeah. So she was like a completely different thing. Yeah, um, I know. It's been fun. But the seals, oh, there's another seal. Oh, it's our machine learning expert who we don't use for machine learning. Oh, and Sophie, too. Oh, both Sophies. Excellent. Okay, well, I'll let you guys take over. Sure. Um, I guess I'll give a brief uh, summary of what we do. So we call ourselves the SEALs, um, and that was kind of a, um, a backronym. So an acronym that we uh, created after we had decided to call ourselves the SEALs. Um, a bunch of us were at a conference in um, Santa Barbara, um, the Women in Intermedia Conference, and we found a SEAL, a dead SEAL at the bottom of a cliff. And somehow this inspired us to start a band <laughs> as, you know, creativity hits. Um, and we decided to work a lot with uh, the techniques of machine learning and um, sort of academic music to create this kind of prog rock surf band. Um, and so we decided to add all these layers of um, artificial intelligence and machine learning into the production of like essentially like pop songs. And so we created this backronym for SEAL, which is now the um, Synthetic Erudition Assist Lattice. <laughs> um, and basically, we that is the collection of AIs that assist us in creating our usable content with which we mold and shape our music, um, both uh, creating sort of MIDI and audio um, from that. Um, visuals and Sophie can talk about the um, seal vision that we've uh, created and also um, the lyrics for the songs. And I will say that we're definitely, um, Marius Watts came up with this idea of um, hard versus soft generative. And I really like it. Um, we, are, we are on the soft side. We take the inspiration from the AIs and manipulate it. So though some of the content that you'll hear in our performance is directly from the AIs, um, a lot of it has been really massaged um, into place, particularly the lyrics um, by our human intervention. Sophie, do you wanna talk about SEAL vision? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's see. How is it made? Um, we. I mean. I guess we're really interested in like the latest and greatest uh, visual processing that can be done with AI. So um, every time we make something, we use something different. Um, but it's always based on like how seals see. So that's the thematic kind of uh, drive for it. And um, they see through motion. Um, they see kind of in black and white, although that's, we've always, or I've always stayed away from making it fully black and white because we're on Zoom and that's, uh, or on the computers, and it's really hard um, for humans to see well when it's like that already, like low res and like degraded colors. So, um, but that, that's where the minimal colors kind of come from. Um, and they kind of see this like refracted light coming off of everything. So everything's glowing for them. Um, and so that's in there. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of just the visual landscape of the, the flows that we have. Um, and then it's all done with like different uh, AI patches that um, exist out there uh, that do like background subtraction, um, there's ones that do, oh, let's see, we use so much, so many things, but now I'm like, <laughs> different ones, um, and some traditional ones, like just, uh, motion, uh, detection and things like that to like bring 
images to the front and like push things back as well. And then all of the uh, content is uh, from different aquariums around uh, the States mostly um, that have live feeds on the internet. So it kind of speaks to like the, the networked uh, oceans of the world. Um, so Leah uh, goes online and um, surfs all of the aquariums and like cuts cuts a lot of hours of different um, sea watching from there. Um, and then uh, lately, I've uh, in twenty sixteen, I think it was, I went on this residency to the Arctic um, called the Arctic Circle dot org, uh, where I shot a lot of film of like seals um and glaciers and all of that kind of stuff so lately i've been incorporating that uh original footage into our work as well and um creating these seal stories Um, and some some of the processing is uh online right i mean it's like the uh yeah the tools are well, the tools come from uh, the internet, so like they mostly come out of these things called collabs that are um, pages that people set up with embedded code in them so that you can run um, code that's on computers, like the, their Google collabs, so they like, belong to Google. Um, also because we have MacBooks right, and all these machine learning things are largely Windows-based. Um, but actually, because we're dealing with video, we have to download and deploy them locally uh, because these collabs are meant to like process one little picture for you so that you can have like a little picture and be like, look, I made an AI thing. Um, but when you're dealing with 35 minutes of video, like <laughs> it has to run on the computer for days. And um, so, yes, yeah, so and then where you take the code and and redeploy it and mix it up with our own stuff. Um, So do you want to talk about sort of how we have the um, some fixed things that we had to generate pre generate and then how we do our live performance and then what we're doing for the audio blast and the ether idea. Sure. Um, I pasted a link in the chat. Um, it looks to my website, sorry. Um, but it's the poster and paper we did for our first performance starting 2020. And that's sort of the performance that really tied us together into the, and like um, our idea and concept really came to fruition for the first time. Um, we use a bunch of machine learning things in our work. Uh, I think the first thing is a lot of our music is um, Generate, uh, inspired by materials from neural network models. Um, recently, we've seen there's a huge conversation about our deep neural networks we have. They're so powerful. They can see, they can generate texts that are indistinguishable from humans um, if they are conscious or not. And um, it's still an ongoing debate, but we can extract some of the material they have learned through like statistically going through the entire internet to to get some drum beats, to get some words, um, to get some melodies out of them. And we use big machine learning models trained by big companies uh, that that sort of encompass as much of the internet as possible um, into into what we have. And then we take that material, the the words um, from either poetry preconditioned deep neural networks or through a chatbot based on GPT-3, which Sophie did, um, and and organize them again into into songs that are consistent with our vision. And it's interesting how neural networks are worked. They are basically numbers streamed together. It's like huge multiplications of gigantic matrices. And, and um, with these numbers, you come up they they are so cold yet at the same time they come up with things that are so much like sensual and have have a lot of poetic elements to it and that's sort of conjuring up materials from the ether and i like the parallel between uh, matrix multiplication and 
I don't know, the universe and the air. So that's what I think about. Like, I am I personally is a PhD student um, working in machine learning, and how people treat these technologies are usually very cold and technological. But for me, the seals means we are approaching this technology, this new scary AI thing, with a very sensual, with a very like joyful approach. Yeah, so then um, Catherine asked if uh, she could join us because she loved our performance so much. And she was like, I do live visuals. We were like, that would be great. Um, and so Catherine, do you want to talk about how you came about? Um, well, I mean, I've, I've been like since COVID, I've been doing a live a, a, a new kind of live visuals for the last two years, which had nothing to do with the live visuals I was doing before COVID, which were based on on Max and and a lot of pre-recorded clips and just some cameras for feedback, and then when COVID started, um, I was using an old operating system and an old version of Max, and none of that could work um, with Zoom or Jitsi or 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 anything I tried, and and in in a panic actually it started because at some point. I had committed to do something until I discovered that I couldn't. And I thought, okay, what can I do? And um, I think someone was just telling me that they were like experimenting with a USB uh, microscope camera. And I remember thinking, oh, I have a couple of those. And I just got those. And then, and, and then uh, I realized I could connect uh, also just a regular camcorder. So everything I do, so, so basically what I do, my live visuals, they're, they're like kind of a, a puppet theater for, uh, with um, live elements uh, that I'm moving my cameras, I mean, live or, or whatever physical elements that I'm moving my cameras on or that I'm moving in front of my cameras. Um, so it's like kind of a puppet theater for the screen, uh, or I also call it visual Foley because, uh, I have all these different materials and, and, and things around me, um, that I use to make live moving images. So, and, and I use, uh, microscope cameras, I use, um, underwater, um, uh, plumbing cameras. Uh, I have just HDMI cameras and, and, and my interface is actually zoom. So, uh, I, I have all those cameras plugged in and I switch between them just via the zoom preferences. So, um, and for this particular performance to go with, with the, uh, theme of, of all of, of, of the, Aquariums and the water, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I have, I'm going to have a lot of water elements, and then um, uh, I actually got uh, an aquarium with fake fish and and um, f fake water plants. Um, <laughs> so it's so good, y'all. And I'm jellyfish. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm fake jellyfish. And so, so it, we we're gonna like um, mix between. Um, some of their pre-recorded uh, visuals of, of fish and seals and, and my um, toy fish visuals. So that should be fun. And then maybe Meg, you uh, what, you want to speak about what you talked in, in the meeting within the Harvest Works Experimental Intermedia meeting we had about how uh, on top of everything, you're all for um, the, you know any glitches and any glitch aesthetic and i i'm for myself i am and and um everything i do all, all the visuals i do they really go they they work well with glitches and actually glitches enhance them and i think you all feel the same way yeah i've been doing uh telematic music uh since my master's degree at uh peabody conservatory in the late 90s um we were sending um midi over the internet we were doing sort of master classes over the internet and um one of the best things i ever heard was um that chris chafe who has also been doing telematic music for a long time was just like we need to create 
rather than like fighting the latency, we just have to create new music that embraces the latency and uses it. Um, and I had a doctoral student here, um, Sarah Weaver, who is very heavily involved in the Jack Tripp Foundation, and she wrote her sort of doctoral thesis on various aspects of composing for the latency. And so when we were talking about how we would work over the internet, um, all of us really already liked Glitch um, as an aesthetic. And so we decided we would not only lean into the latency, we would lean into the glitch. Um, and instead of really stressing about how to make these perfect productions, um, lean in, lean into those imperfections, enjoy them, react to them, um, try to force them to happen if they're not happening. Um, I literally um, keep my computer that I'm performing on um, on the um, not on an Ethernet jack, but on a Wi-Fi. There, that's the word. Um, and in our performance um, on Saturday, we're actually going to be bringing in um, like shortwave radios. And not many people are on shortwave anymore. <laughs> so we just have like a lot of noise. And it's going to be great. Um, Sophia or other Sophia, do you want to talk about that at all? Expand on that? Um, radios or theremins, because oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I can talk about theremins. Um, yeah, so when we originally got together, um, we I made these theremins for us that are um, that were painted on. So the skull that we found, we thought it would be really cool to like wave our hands over it and have it go. Ooh, um <laughs> because it's creepy and also because there's this thing on zoom that we do when you log in you're like hey Garia has it um uh, it's like connecting to to like the uh, the world outside who knows the beyond right um and so we thought that would be a really great uh way to transform the skull um and uh as a result um it was too uh, it was too great of a uh, responsibility to paint that particular skull so it didn't happen yet so we got some on etsy um and they put together these theremins um and if Rio holds up the shape again um you can see like it's sitting on this crystal so actually the entire all the sides of the crystal are an antenna so it's an exercise in playing with antennas um and okay. seeing the, the different kind of pickups that you can make um yeah do you have it there with you no no yeah, Rhea yeah has it. oh because we don't we haven't seen it yet if you look at Rio on the screen uh no it's not there and and also for her to uh, appear full full screen she should say something otherwise she just stays at a hello, hello. Rhea, speak while you hold the skull hi <coughs> oh that's weird there there's no uh... yeah super crystal exactly yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and that, um, you know, that's a radio and, uh, I've, oh, there you go, Ria, say some more things. Your image is back. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just make noise. Um, just go. <laughs> yeah, because, um, because that's like one very simple form of radio, uh, that we found really interesting and, that kind of extrapolates to like all the glitches, you know, which are transmitted over Zoom. Um, you know, that's going through radio waves as well, like Wi Fi is radio, um, the electromagnetic pickups that we use in our instruments, like that's all radio. So it was just kind of a very direct way to take this thing that we found that was the origin of our band and like use this electromagnetic paint to like make a radio that we could um play with so yeah so yeah sophie made all of those um theremins and mailed them to each of us um and then we also um have a die that we roll during these performances um 
because one of my friends at Stony Brook does like research into telepresence and having an object that is the same across your virtual um, spaces really helps increase engagement and intimacy. Yeah, because uh, our band and like use this electromagnetic paint to make a radio that we could um, play with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Sophie made all of those um, pheromones and mailed them to each of us. Um, and then we also um, have a die that we roll during these performances. Um, because one of my friends at Stony Brook does like research into telepresence and having an object that is the same across your virtual um, spaces really helps increase engagement and intimacy. Oh, that's weird. It looks like we're getting recorded and transmitted through. Well, <laughs> that's radio for you. <laughs> yeah, we're getting the we're getting the glitchiest presentation. That's great. Um, oh yeah, that's also why the thermons happened. Um, I forgot and the dials because during this like age of lockdowns, we realized that like by having the same things in the screen with us, um, it really just made it feel like we were together like it made a consistent um presentation across the image um even though we're all in different places um so that's not really like a machine learning thing or or a transmissions thing well i guess it's a transmissions thing um in terms of like visual understanding but it really changed like the vibe of just having the same objects in the room yeah, and Rhea's gonna get. Uh, she can't find the exact same shortwave radio that I found, but she like found one, and so we're gonna have similar radios um, on Saturday. And then um, I have my mom's old harp, and I'm gonna bring that down into the performance space to echo uh, what Sophia is gonna be playing on. So we're is it a we're full size? It. Is it a full size harp? It's a Celtic harp, so it's a little not huge, oh, okay. but pretty big and very <laughs> out of tune. Wow. Well. Yeah, and I was just thinking it's interesting that um, uh, the first presentation, well, after Julian's, we started with uh, neuro networks, and and then uh, Sophia just brought back the neuro, the neuro networks. So we're going in full circle this morning or this evening for you in France. Does any do any of you have anything else to say? I don't know if you hear my background. We have these four days a week. We have uh, an hour of protests where people bang on uh, plastic paint cans. What are they protesting? It's in front of the Museum of um, Chinese in America because apparently the Museum of Chinese in America got a a huge grant and... um, on the other hand, a, a lot of like really poor businesses in Chinatown closed down, mm-hmm. and these people feel that the museum should give their grant back to help, you know, these businesses that are having so much trouble. So, and but we're lucky; it's only an hour now. They started out with it; it, it used to be like three hours a day like like and unfortunately they're not drummers so but i mean the the cause isn't bad and 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 it's i think it's mostly artists who do it but oh my god like is it it gonna be happening uh on saturday is that during our performance like you should hang a mic out the window um no it's not because it's from 11 to 12 or 11 15 to 12 15 and our performance is at 9 20. so Oh, I had a question for for APO thirty three. If if we do it, the performance on our own YouTube channel, will you still be able to record it, Jenny or Julian? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. You will go on the main channel uh, too, so it will be recorded on yours and on ours. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 
Yeah, because it was nice other years that I could go back and, you know, look at the recordings of the sessions I missed. I really appreciated that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So do we have anything else to say? Anything exciting? Ladies? I feel like we've already gone through the nature of life and art today. We've <laughs> talked a lot about radios. Um, I'm talking. I'm referencing the previous presentations. Yeah, I'm glad Jenny brought brought um, brought up the the cage piece. The mm -hmm. um, because no, nobody was mentioning it. And what I what I love about that piece is that it has the precise tuning places on the on the radio sets and you tune to those wherever you are in the world so anywhere you are is it's going to be different and and i love that it's like it, it really is a chance operation but it's it's also an improvisation without being an improvisation because john cage hated, hated improvisation but that was a way of improvising with so Catherine, I don't know if you saw uh, in the chat, I said I saw a performance of that in Banff, Canada once, and it was all noise. There was oh, not a single radio station. It was so great. Oh, wow. And because I saw, I saw that, chat, but I didn't know what you were referring to. Yeah, uh, so. and I've seen a bunch of performances of it, and that really just was so special. It was, it was all the different texts. All 12, all 12 were, ju were just yeah. noise. Wow, that's cool amazing yeah has it ever happened like that there were just a lot of ads i've heard it with a bunch like not all ads but like several of the stations having ads at the same time okay i Does always wondered know? about that because i don't know if, if that <laughs> if that piece by cage if it's for am or fm band or I think it's FM yeah so FM tends to have a little less advertisement than AM usually well but it would be interesting to do that piece across the world mm -hmm. across which, the network which would which is would now be possible with with Jitsi or Zoom or you know yeah, we were thinking of we were thinking of tuning in um, to shortwave radios on the internet. Uh, Catherine, in particular, was interested in in finding some stations from Ukraine and Russia at the moment. And it's even more interesting today. <laughs> so, you, yeah, <sighs> you know they invaded, right? But. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, speaking of early telematic art, do you, um, Meg, do you remember See You, See Me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we we did. Uh, I, I was part of a, a, a women in technology org in, in, in Canada in, in, the, in the early 90s. And we did stuff. I remember we did like concerts with between Montreal and California with like, you know, three minute latency. <laughs> But we were thrilled. And with Australia, we did it with a Tasmania ones, I think. But we were thrilled. I, I loved See You, See Me. I thought that was the best thing ever when it appeared. One of my favorite sort of histories of telematics uh, is the in the America, in the, in the West, the telephone companies wanted to charge a lot, a lot, a lot of money for running telephone cables between the houses. And they figured out that they could send the telephone signal along the barbed wire on their uh, pastures. So oh, well. they, they just used the barbed wire instead of telephones. Um, and I think that that, I just love that imagery of <laughs> the barbed wire carrying the messages in and it's like defiance of big, big business. <laughs> Take that, Verizon, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a secure network. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could just like probe onto it. 
Yeah, I'm go my plan for my radio for a concert is to paint it um, <laughs> on a piece of watercolor uh, to paint the landscape here in California. Um, yeah, for that reason, because it's just like, it's so funny how you can, when I was a kid, I, I had these little kits where you can, it's basically like a piece of graphite and copper and something else. And you like, you connect it to your pipes in your, like where the water comes out of and you can hear AM with it oh, without wow. amplification or power or anything like that. Like, it's just like. And it's, you know, that's just crazy. It doesn't need power or amplification to hear sound. You can just paint it. Wow. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Because if, if nobody does, we could go have lunch here dinner there true um i'll just make a plug for anyone um the presentations today have been really great and i started a journal called the journal of networked music and arts or Janma, and it is uh, open source you just pay a fee for copy editing and we charge a tiny bit more per copy edit so that we have a little tiny fund in case there is a hardship in paying that forty dollars um, so I think we we pay the editor 40 per article, but we charge 50 or 45 or something so that we can have a little fund in case people have trouble paying that $40, especially with countries with um, extreme disparities in exchange rates. So we are always looking for content and we're trying to expand what is possible for academic journals so we we welcome multimedia uh it's an online publication hosted at stony brook so there's a lot of possibilities uh and i would love it to have some of you uh, document your processes or pieces or thoughts meg people are asking you to add a link in the chat if you could um i why don't i email you i'm on my phone <laughs> So okay. I'll uh, email, email you, Catherine. And we'll, what? And we'll paste it in. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a plug. Uh, Sunday, though, I know it's at the same time as a concert, but it's our next OLAP online live art performance um, community meeting. And our guests are Unstum, who are... Um, from Berlin, and that's um, uh, and 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 they're presenting a project which is um, an app for um, a kind of augmented uh, visuals for live performance over the internet. So, and th and that's between three and five p.m. on Sunday. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Yes, and you can get the uh, the link to the it, it's it's on Zoom. You can get the link to the Zoom uh, at um, the Harvest Works website, and I think that's www dot dot org. So yeah, so it's three to five Eastern Standard. So it's uh, nine p.m. to eleven p.m. for you people in Europe. Have you sent it yet, Meg? Yep, I sent it. Let's see, have I got, gotten it yet? Yes, I did. Okay. So I don't know, uh, Sylvan, if you want to say hello. Uh, Julian presented your work earlier today, but we didn't get to oh, meet yeah. you. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Uh, I do apologize. Uh, my daughter arrived a week earlier, so uh, it uh, has congratulations. Been a, thank you. So it has been a little bit chaotic, and the rules of COVID uh, in the hospital in New York are you have to leave the hospital 24 hours after the birth. So it's a little bit all over the place at the moment. But uh, thank you for having me, and it was a pleasure to listen to the the previous talk. <laughs> thank you. And there you have the. Um the link to the journal 
that um, Meg was talking about. Oh, super. All right, thank you, everyone. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there was a good afternoon, morning for some others, for you, especially in New York. And no, no, in California, it's breakfast. California. Uh, you know, in New York and California. No, California, it's nine in the morning now. Oh, wow, yeah, so it was uh, early night then. <laughs> <laughs> well, for us, it's time for having an aperitif, a nice wine and uh, some cheese. <laughs> Of course, not to say the Italian food and the French food cuisine talk we had earlier. <laughs> French, French, yes. French, um, French camembert string theory. <laughs> yeah, I tried to bring the camembert into the uh, multiverse, but I'm not sure. <laughs> that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad I missed this. Dude, yeah, I think I think stinky cheese definitely exists across multiple dimensions. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. If any cheese does. <laughs> anyway, we're looking forward to see your performance on Saturday. It will be also seen by physical real people in in the venue, which is also Under good. Yep. And they will have a nice beer and a nice chat. So will it, be a, it will be also an interesting performance in the, as this conference was really great, the cleach and the, I don't know, it went crazy at some point. That was, that was great. That, sure that may have been my fault. But, but Saturday, <laughs> Saturday, it's not at platform multimedia, is it? It's no. at Les Ateliers de Bitch. Yeah. And yeah. Les Ateliers de Bitch is named after Rue de Bitch, uh, which is a town in the north of France, or east of France. Not, uh, not, not a bit. Not the not... English word. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it has an E at the end. But, um, yeah. so, so there'll be like a large screen. Yeah, uh, it'll be a large screen and a big PA with subwoofers. And um, it will be also on the internet, of course, but um, people will have the full-on experience of your performance. I hope they wear masks. Uh, do we are we mask free yet, or is that March? I'm confused uh, about the free mask, but we could You're drink. No, no, we could drink standing up. Oh yeah, and dancing. So, yes. Yeah. So. What happens in the last few couple of weeks is that since they reopen uh, the dance uh, nightclub uh, and allow drinking standing up, I'm not sure the uh, the mask is doing anything anymore. But we we still have things like the pass sanitaire, yeah, um, and uh, the Omicron has flooded France, and I think we're all uh, on a kind of down now. Yeah. But if you if you want to be a Renaissance artist, you can wear a mask. <laughs> but is that not to avoid? Was that to avoid COVID or? No, she said it. Identity. No, I think it was identity. Or five G. It was a mix of it. It was a mix of identity and five you know, G. <laughs> yeah, she was saying you never know when your identity could be stolen and stuff. Yeah, on the networks. Right. Well, which, which is actually true, it happens. Uh... Well, it's actually on the Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. And so it's true. If you want to hide your identity, it's not the greatest conference. Okay. So thank you very much to yes. you know, be here and talk to us. Thank you, Sylvain. Thank you, your ability. Yeah, and uh, well, see you in chat on Saturday and hear your music and your uh, see your video videos. And Thank for you those very much. Yeah. to the exhibition is still going on with all the works happening yeah. there. And um, thank you very much to uh, the audience and everyone and all the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. À bientôt. Bye bye. À très vite.